Alphonsine are actually face to face on Initiator too. But this isn't the old sassy dominated Initiator matchup where he's playing Sova and Faith. It's Sky and it feels like Kawanzine's world. Both of these teams looked really good in the pistol rounds in their most recent game. Loud have gone for a four player push out through B main with an A retake wall. Less just holding on and Sentinels are very, very slow here. Very slow, it's cautious, but it's definitely going to be spotting this. So they're going to be waiting into it. Marv's up close. Kawanzine takes the first fight and the first name. Welcome back to competitive, Marv. Yep, see you later. Got to watch from the sidelines for this round. And it's been, again, running all the way back after that deep push. Kills all they get. They don't overstep themselves, just backing away. Leaving it into that 4v5. Here. And actually moving fairly significantly over to the A side too. Sadak pops down. A Killjoy turret just to get a little look over and a deep flash over into A main does not see anything from Kawanzine. So now this is going to start to pull the defenders back over to B. They're so cautious with the clearing. Just in case someone's close. But yeah, Jiggle Peak by two years. Saw one player, Jump Peak as well, spots the rest of them inside it. It's now aware of it. Sentinel's going to be trying to get this hit. Going right into Aspas. Trailblazers exchanged. Finding ways. Stun on either side, really slowing this one down for 20 seconds remaining. Just remaining. firing line with the frenzies, and it could be anyone's game, but at the end of the day, it's Loud who claimed that pistol. Big pistol round from Loud, very nicely coordinated. You can see what their game plan was from the beginning. The push down B long, found a pick, put them into a 5v4. They don't overextend. They find good info on A, return back. I mean, Loud looking completely in control of that pistol round there. And Loud winning the pistols was massive for their victory over Furia. And actually, Sentinels getting out to good starts powered their almost 2-0 against Leviathan. And I feel like that's it's been such a this weird couple of fun. weeks for Sentinels. So strange. They're coming into Super Week with two matches on the schedule, making role changes. Who knows what the changes are going to be once Tens comes back into the lineup too, because they'd have to move it all back again, presumably. Yeah. It's, it's a bizarre time to be following this Sentinels team, but they've got some very natural roles here. We'll see if they can go for a bit more of a, a puggy style in this game. It's gonna have to be leaning into it. Maybe that's just it. Bit of the individual mechanics showing off here. Zekken, he's been playing a lot of the jet in ranked as well, just trying to get used to it for his time on the big stage. Still a bit of a repeat and a lovely trade. Def taking a head off Kawazin still. It's returned. And now they know where Aspas is. Very, very cautious from Pancada there. He's just been tucked in that corner the entire time. Les grabs another Spike one. Spectres are spitting. Yeah. So much confidence to take these fights as well. Offsetting a little bit with the movement. That's down to just Pancada though. Not too much one can do in this scenario. Not when the spike's been dropped down straight into mid. No. Time to touch on you know, more of those little story points as well that we were kind of hinting at. And the desk has been, you know, slamming home as well. 30 seconds left. But what an uphill battle. It feels like you put it lightly if you call it an uphill battle for Sentinels. You're Definitely. starting on pulls, a map where they got absolutely smashed on just the other week. But the slight silver lining to that is that despite getting obliterated by Leviathan here, they knew that Loud were going to pick this. As soon as Icebox is removed from the map pool, oh, yeah, it's one it, is, the other. it is 100% obvious that Loud are going to be picking Pearl into you. So Sentinels have had the whole, you know, time off to prep for this, but like Sean said, there are two matches this week. It is not just Loud that Sentinels are trying to get ready for. There's also that game against MIBR later on yeah. in the week. And arguably, the game against MIBR is a little winnable. A little more winnable, sorry. Although, really, who knows when it comes to BCT Americas. Been all over the place, but Loud are the undefeated team. We've got it on Americas. Marv is under so much pressure here. Same as the pistol round, but his positioning a little further forward. Swarming him. Oh, lovely snake bite. And a very confident re-peak as soon as he knew there that the Loud players would be vulnerable. And look at the space that's been taken as well by Sentinels. No time wasted. I like it. It's confident yeah. and aggressive from Zekken. He can hear some of the rotates. I think Sadak just spotted him there with the jump peak too. Yep, pinged it out on the minimap. So they take the space, but backing away and looking to work their way towards Art now. A bit of a flash clears that angle. The other part, out. too, that I don't think Sentinels realize that Les is running this A retake wall. In theory, it should make B easier to win the post plants. You know, because you don't have that Viper wall there that combos with the, the high tide to keep you out. When you're playing those post plant spam angles, 
if that's something they get a read on later on down the line, maybe they can use that info to dictate their positioning. But the spike is actually coming to be here. It's been slowed all the way down, hasn't it? But 30 approaching 30 seconds, Josh Tyne is running low. The spike is not going B. The and players were. Left. And what's the decision? But Sassy's making his way towards Art with Zekert. It has to be A. That's where you have to land this now. Really no room to pivot. No room to maneuver. Gonna land here. How do they want to do it? Snake fight. They haven't really pulled out enough of this util. They can't quite get into the site. Now down to the final 15. Dash forward. Second cuts up the angles, but still is gonna be met with the entirety of Loud almost just here, ready and waiting, pushing forwards in and out. Bit of a spray. Transfer coverage is there. Spike needs to go down, and it does. How? How have they done that? Marv just pulled magic. 3v1. It was looking done. Just covering everybody that tried to flood in there and deny the plan. It was looking finished. Placing swarm grenade. Swarm grenade out. 1v3. Oh, the oh gun no. Picked up. He's still alive with 40 health, only three bullets though. Needs a bit of an upgrade and won't find it. Oh, shutting that down before it just gets that bit more dangerous. But what an opening from him. Coverage as well, man. What a round. Look at how they hold the angles here. This wide shot will show it beautifully. Zekin gets picked off. The spike is dropped. And there's Marv around the cove, covering people that try and flood back in through the cascade. Manages to grab two, then swings around the other side to deal with two E's. Ice cold, baby. Like he never left. He's had a long break, but welcome back to the big stage. And to be honest, it feels like a long break, I'm sure, to him. But he's only really missed one major tournament. It's true. Flash and a peak! Oh my goodness! And Zekin set up quite well for that one. Yeah, that's amazing. I don't know whether he managed to dodge a flash somehow. Mark Sadak is just determined oh to take that fight. They're in a 3v5. Sadak's thinking the only way to get back in here is if I win the aim duel against Marv. We're not going to be able to win a 3v5 retake. So looks a bit daft and it feeds Marv the kill. But you can see what he was going for there. And a minute left, and this should just all be Sentinels. Instant clapback. Yep. That's what you want to see from Sentinels. You know, I was you know, talking behind the scenes a little bit heading into this match as well. I was doing my digging, and, you know, oh, there yeah. was whispers, there was rumors on the wins that, you know, they're saying, okay, we're going to have to lean more into a bit of a puggy play style, you I know, mean, a bit of, course, of individuality. Of they haven't had much time to prep, of course, with this, uh, with this roster, the circumstances around this team. But you think about the quality of the players that they have. Absolutely. And the fact that, you know, the roles make more sense now. They, they really do with Sassy back on the initiator. I think people have forgotten a little bit about how elite Sassy really is. I mean, the time's looking like one of the best initiator players in the world, at least top five whenever he's been playing at these events. Yeah, I mean, towards the end of last year, I think he was the best as well. But yeah, certainly always in the conversation and floating up and down in that kind of area. I mean, same with Marv, though, right? Like, it's... Absolutely. When yeah. Marv was at his peak, he was the best. And then it's between him and Mako, that kind of conversation. Him, Mako Pankada as well. Yeah. He's playing with him now. Yeah. It's very funny how it's worked out like this. It is. Two initial kills, then, that just stifle Loud instantly. And maybe that'll stop Loud from going for the mid-aggression. Interestingly, Les is back to that B-wall. So no A retake set up. Louder expected to anchor more heavily. Or maybe play mid again. It looks like another early high tide to lock out mid control. I do like to do this, don't they? Yeah. Flash as well. Push it back. It's a weaker bio for Loud, so they don't quite have the weapons. No advantage to be found there. Sen right now just opting into making sure that they prioritize a couple of these key ultimates. And of course, Sentinels want to keep some of these ultimates on board for the next round, which will be a really important economical swing round. So having one of the Seekers or the Reckoning in order to get a Viper's Pit out post will be something they want for round six. So you can't just bust them all now. And a contact re-clear. It's the name of the game. There's that early presence from Loud that we were talking about. But space going to be regained. Tuiz throws his Cascade there all the way back from spawn. So he makes it feel like there's presence in the B connector, despite the fact that Tuiz is anchoring A. Those are the little things where Tuiz is often further ahead than other Harbor players. Everybody grouped up. Looks like the goal is going to be that B side. Seekers opted into here, making sure that they clear most of the side with it. Moving forwards, Aspas only with a shorty in his hands. He has to get out of there. And they're actually going to use a huge amount of ultimates here on the Anti-Eco. Giving a ton of respect to Loud. 
Cloud might just be happy with that one. It's a difficult retake. That's just an angle. Watch for a bit of spam into the common position. Here. Kill claimed. It's oh, that's so, rough. Oh, that's dangerous. With Marv going down, so does the pit. All your coverage is finished, and a rifle in the hands of Kawazin. Well, anything's possible. Rifle to the side, tries to reset it, but Pankata maintains composure. Locks down the angle. Three still up. Tap, tap with a rifle. Offset with the movement. Reset enough that it should be safe hands, but weak enough still. No. Spike tapping and ticking away. Shot one, two. Zekun with three in a round. It is secure, but my god, is it expensive. Very costly. Sentinels won't be as worried about the cash, to be honest, as the ultimates that were invested, but they're still going to have that reckoning available. So it's not a disaster. They use Seekers, they use Pit. That's the roll issues quite a bit, but Sassy being on that sky, mm. not a Zekin being set up quite nicely. A lot of his kills come off the back of some lovely flashes. Dogs to re-clear. And Sassy is not a sky player. He's an initiator, a very storied winning initiator player. But he's only, prior to this map, he's only played four maps ever of sky. Yeah. You know, and two of those, I believe, maybe even more, have been with this Sentinel squad. We're crashing. So he's, he is mostly Sova, Fade, bit of Breach, that kind of thing. And he's normally quite a safe player too. Which is why I think it's going to be so interesting to see him clash with Kawan Zin in this match and see who can extract the more value. Because Kawan Zin's aggressive. One of the most aggressive Sky players that we've got. And extraordinarily talented. It makes it look easy. <laughs> and then I noticed that you've been trying it, Brandon. It just isn't. Oh, I've got like a 30% win rate. <laughs> I've, been, I've been spamming Sky trying to learn it. It's, it's, it's not going good. It's not going well. So here Sentinels have taken a lot of mid control, looking to flash through exactly as the cascade was placed, but the flash did not find anything. Yep. Less Stopped than two tracks. Perfectly placed there to avoid poison that. Orb emitting. I thought it was used, but look at that. The poison orb as well, just to push them away. And even Seekers in the mid round here, That's even in the mid round at this seconds. point, exactly, because 30, 30 seconds, seconds on the clock. Left. Not a lot of time to work with. As bonkers as it sounds, this might just end up being a save round. They're gonna try and work their way through B Link, but can you really get all the way through? 17 seconds left, Viper's pit dropped. Need an advantage and they need it now. Shot. Gonna be hitting there. Dog's gonna seconds. be broken. 10, 10 seconds. They can't even get through to this. It's half baked at first and the spray transfer. Sassy. Maybe a chance, but not quite now. No time on the clock. After the last player standing. Exchange there with a rifle, but okay. Pushing back the aggression. And what that does is actually keep the loud economy a little suppressed. So despite the fact that that looked like a devastatingly bad round from Sentinels, and I was saying it might even have to be a save, they ran in here, got the Viper's Pit out, and did enough damage to Loud that their economy is not in a great place. I mean, look at this. Les is going to have Light Armor Bulldog heading nice. into the next round. It, oh, Full Armor Bulldog, I suppose, because somebody's dropped him. I think that was Sadak. But overall, still a decent idea. However, the time is becoming a big issue for Sentinels. Here. Maybe just in terms of having to over-communicate with the new players. Yeah. But also, it's understandable. Updraft double in play here from Zekin with the knives. He was looking for an opening, hoping that somebody, namely Aspas, was going to be playing on top of the box. There's a common angle with the operator, and it does catch it. Still reckoning now to clear up this site. All's going to go up as well, and Trailblazer to clear into the back of halls. And the Reckoning has found nobody, so that means Dev's got the freest plan of his life. Louder going to be playing full retake here. Reckoning's going to be used to clear out the side as well, so straight away, all the way back. Lockdown's going to be used in response to this, though. Needs to be broken. Louder not wasting any time, are they? Snake by into the corner position, pinging it out, trying to spam it. They need to break this! And damage not done. Not enough to it. Two players detained, Loud. But they can't go hunting for them. Deep flash around the corner, dodge for the moment. High tide in their faces as well, still out. Could still be favored because they have not given up this space. Pushed up through, four kills for Kawazin. Oh, not even gonna be able to hunt out that ace, is he? Oh, that high tide is gorgeously placed by two E's. not done yet. I mean, it's beautiful. The deep high tides make such a difference on this map. And that just cut off everybody. They're all playing so towards good. the back. They have to hold forwards. It's so precise. I mean, he will sometimes do a high tide that's close, sometimes one towards pillar, and then that one over towards the back. Yeah. After everyone's just been pushed away, it's gorgeous and allows loud. loud. 
A perfect retake. They are the masters of this composition. They know exactly how to play it. Their retakes on B are just impeccable. And now they've got a wall on A, but... It doesn't, I mean, it's not really doing too much, this Viper Wall. Oh, sorry, it's a high tide. My, my apologies. The Viper Wall is still back in that position over towards B. Got confused there because Les has been running a retake Viper yeah. Wall on A a couple of times, but... He's actually trying to hard anchor it now with Sada. A bit of a reclearance, so information gathered. Second looking like he's pre-aiming there for the jump spot. Flash round the side. It was a cascade push in their face though, so no fights to be taken, but... And Sentinels have definitely grasped at this point the louder faking mid-pressure at the start of these rounds. They're, they're taking a lot of this space fairly freely. You know, no, no Trailblazer used. Is it an off and goal? Doesn't win it out. Our spike carrier Strained was the approach of it. Heal has to be used and it has slowed this down and the kill was found because Sadek's still alive. Free aiming on top of the box. Flash. Flash is connect. bad. It's, it's bad. They think it's clear. They're jumping right around the corner. Right into his face and he's still alive. Still kicking. Bit of a nuisance still. Instinct on show here by Death. A reflank by Kawanzin could be devastating right now. It's taken Sentinel so long to get in and get this plant yeah. down. This is important. Spider's about spike to be taken around main despite the spike going down. Zekum was watching. Great stuff. Aware of it. Into a two on three and Asfas does have the knives but he's retaken with the operator nevertheless. Right. Pushing forward, That's spamming to the standing. corner. Asfas is caught and you know where two years is. He was just spamming, clean. What a play by Pankara. Lovely stuff. Working his way forwards there. It's a little risky, but he is confident in the rest of his team behind. One enemy remaining. I'm sure it must feel good. We heard in the interview earlier Sassy say, yeah, playing against Loud, it's like playing against any other team. Okay, buddy. Sure, sure. <laughs> Sadak was saying the same thing, just another day in the office for him. Yeah, but uh, I, I'd be interested in talking to them afterwards and seeing how they feel, because I feel like some of that is them telling themselves that it's just another game in order to get them psychologically in the right place for the match. I mean, Sassy and Sadak have played together for so long. It's been, just been one of the most concrete duos in Valorant yeah. up until this year when they split apart after just beat uh, winning champions and hoisting that trophy together. Timeout going to be taken here for Sentinels. Queued up a little bit ahead of time. Maybe thinking about what they exactly want to be doing here. And Sentinels have a lot of good information to work with. They know that, in general, the high tide off the beginning of mid is not being fought over. They can take mid fairly easily, but they have seen two players B link, not as many players Art. Maybe they want to try and take Art, break the alarm bot early, make Loud panic a little bit and create some more space on the other sides. I think normally on the attack side, Pearl, you want to be hammering those B hits because it's probably the best site to hit with this kind of composition. But when Loud look that good on the retake, it makes you feel second a lot worse yourself. about it. It really does make you second guess yourself. They have so many layers and understandings of how they're supposed to be playing this comp. The way they weave in and out when the Viper War goes down and the high tide. My bot. Back and forth, back and forth. Alarm bot's broken early there. That was placed right in the center. So early presence, but... Marved. I'm sure he clears it safely. They're People worried fly. about Aspas pushing up deep here behind the high tide. So they've used Cascade, Flash, another Flash, another Cascade. A lot of the Sky and Harbor utility just to secure Sassy that orb and get his ult online. The flash seems to indicate that there's nobody there, but with two E's jump peeking it, they're going to have a decent idea now. They're setting uh, up? The backstab here. Does Aspas have this sixth I'm sense that it's trail. coming? Trying to set up for the B split, aren't they? And Stun actually hits onto the own dog as well, slowing it all the way down. Fight to be taken. So oh, perfect timing! For two! Absolutely insane, and Aspas is pressured. Dash is active. Inside the smoke, got trap round the side, trying to break the ankles, but... Just too little. Really can't shut it down. And Bancada reads it too. It's all in the hands of two E's. Pushing forward down to the cove. Will not be able to stick that. Sentinels looking sublime on that one, no? I mean, the way it 
just watched that from Aspas' his POV, and he turns away the instant that Marv goes through that door. Yeah, I think the timing that they took to take that fight through the double doors was just amazing. When the pressure on site is getting a little bit too much, the players are rotating back, they're feeling like they have to relieve a bit of it, help Aspas out. Late without being baiting. Yeah. I mean, Marv, even when he was playing with that Optic NRG kind of squad, he would have some gorgeous lurk timings on this map. It was his playground in terms of understanding defender rotations. This time, Loud are going to follow that high tide into mid. And Sentinels want nothing of it. They've been playing slowly, usually I around think... this area of the map, and they just send it be. I think this is a fantastic read. When Loud are going to be on the weaker buy, you know that they're going to be trying to play off that prior conditioning and take that mid control heavy. And the answer from Sentinels is just run it all the way down into B, like you said. Josh Flick of the wrist from Les. Sheriff shots going a bit wide here. Still, you want to maintain some presence of side control here, but it is being cleared quite rapidly. Updraft. Asso's trying to take that high ground angle. They hit that shot. Dave, what is that from Marved? A shot to land, a shot to hit. Prison to mind, not there, but sprayed down eventually. Second gets the kill. Low enough, though, that he will fall. Enough opportunities, too many, perhaps. Eventually brought down Sadak. Time running so damn low now. He's going to be walking right into the crosshair of our half. Already, though, this has been a spectacular half from Sentinels, considering that Loud won the pistol round. They've only won two rounds after that. Yeah. One where Sentinels just didn't work the time properly and got caught in a weird situation trying to pivot through the B link and another very nice ret retake over towards B. But aside from that, Sentinels' ability to work the map, to find picks, the lurk plays in terms of like backstabbing, it's all been good. And you want a player to focus on, it's got to be Marved. His debut on the America stage for 2023. I mean, what an opening. And what a player he's been. We've been missing him. Let's be real, we've been missing Marv here. He's just been dominant. So loud, anchoring towards that A main position, but look at this, the rest of the Sentinels. Oh, and they're getting pinged. Look at those blue pings lighting them up. Sentinels have no idea, but loud are clearly surrounded. aware. Yeah, this is loud giving up the space, perhaps intentionally, but at least... In the know-how of it. Reckon is going to be used. Clears out the site. Guess what? Nobody's there. All of A-Main is taken. And, well, they want to reclear it with the dog still. There's a gap. It's down to the reactions. And Zekin wins it. The young gun as well. Taking names once more. Pushing through into the back of the site together. Making sure that they're playing this one nicely. Still, though, the spike not down. And they are being pressured from multiple angles. With Pankata falling. This is difficult. Need to cover for the fire here. Down and taking the fights. It's more than opportune. Dash to the side, it is getting scrappy. 40 seconds though, and a full pivot. There's more than enough time to get to B right now. Sadak can hear them, it's a foot race. Yeah, who can meet them first? Sadak wants to try and put a stop to this it one. If you get 30 seconds left. It's so again, either one of the players who could put a stop to it, and he has found the line of side angle. Double swing though, double face right through, watching for it. Out. A tap of it. Util is going to be pushing it back. Now time is running really low, and this flag is so important. Second wins it. Absurd. But it has to stick it. Flash round the side. Doesn't spot it. Sadek was playing anti kill. One, two. Unreal. That is just magnificent. What a recovery that is. That's so well played by the Sentinels players, too. The way in which they navigated that, I love their push on the A site, back site as well. But Sadak's aim, small movement reset. And he takes down his longtime companion, Sassy, to secure the round and make this one reasonable for Loud. Had they lost that, they're in a devastating position. It's looking ice cold. Final round now of this first half. And it might just be simple stuff. They got a lockdown, they got a Viper's Pit. Get out of my way. Shove it into B. Try and use the ults as well to take that B plan, but there is one obstacle they're gonna be facing, that's that reckoning. It means they can't really play anchored deep into the back of B. If they do opt into the B post plan, they're all gonna be playing it from far back positions. We know how good loud are. And they're playing that B retake. It's gonna be the lockdown use so again, clears them back. No presence from loud. The most important thing here is just that Marv stays alive. There is going to be so much spam coming through. There it is. 
Reckoning, they want to try and flood into the side as well as the plant's going down. I want to try and take the fight, and it's getting chaotic. It's getting messy to spam through. Mount 4 stuns in the face. It smokes around. This way, that way, everywhere. You can barely I tell what's going on. Nana swamped down at their feet, trying to push them off the spike. No one's going to be sticking this one, but look at this position. Look at this angle. Aspas fully aware. Smoke though dropped out. Angle works for spraying it through in the corner. Two is. Sticking in those bullets. This is absolutely absurd. And it needs to be a swing. But Gata finishes. But Gata, the veteran, taking it to that young rookie that is now filling his spot on the other side. It was another good high tide. A nice attempt at the retake even taking down Marved in the pit. But at the end of the day, Sentinels, without even winning the pistol, have a 7-5 lead here on Pearl. What are we watching? What an insane final round of that first half. I mean, it's been back and hammering home there. I also think with how heavily this map trends towards retakes and how important they are to all have everybody on the same page, I think Sentinels might struggle here a little. So getting that pistol round off, would be a massive boost. To go up potentially 9-5 here gives them a bit of the buffer that they might need to convert. A lot of friends is being purchased here, loud. Big fans of the weapon. Opting into it. And we'll see what Sada can do here. This timing being taken here is the footsteps. And well, just like that. Kill claimed, still running his wee little legs there. He's being howled now by three other players. They've missed the timing. This is Sentinels now at that 4v5 and fight to be taken. Still one out. Sadak will fall. Pushed up now, close. Second. The Trailblazer missed. Off. Trailblazer missing, but that's just a clear horse. And they have taken up the space. Running backwards, firing them down, beaming them down. 3v2, players are low. Wading through it with the decay, flashing his hands. Kawazin into it how does he take this fight jiggling off the movement still doesn't win it but there is coverage there and now it's down to sassy one time One's there what a shot to be found away sassy that is demonic now there's one three. hp and he pulls that one out i mean how does he even hit the first never mind the second that is unreal. I am oh just in my awe. God. Nice Outlandish. Outlandish. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is I think absolutely I think outlandish. I think everyone watching that pistol clutch had the exact same reaction. That is just otherworldly from Sassy. Lauda gonna go for a half fight that includes three stingers here. And still running it all the way down. Look at this, it's gonna be leading into the B splits. Right through though, trying to disrespect that cascade. Not gonna be meeting a match here. And a bit of spam onto the common angle, the common position. It's all game sense from second. The B split, no aim necessary, but they do need to worry about this. Yep, that flank attempt coming through. Dashing forwards, Aspers. Trying to make the most of it, will not find anything else. It's cleaned up. This is an amazing start for Sentinel. Sassy has just given them a huge, huge advantage in this map by winning the pistol and setting them up to potentially win a bonus here. Because like I said, I'm not sure how good Sentinels are gonna be on the B retakes. And you can actually see the way in which they're playing is quite heavy to deny the plant coming through in the first place. They're not opting into the classic B retake setups. Pancada is somewhat hard anchoring. They had three on the pistol round running down B link to try and get into the site. What's the game plan here? So they've got Alarm Bot and Turret watching Art. So this looks like a bit of an, like a passive info play. Although having said that, Marv with the Vandal is pushed up really deep at the moment. Maybe that's just for the early round. Turret falls, and the bait idea here is that they break the turret and they don't expect the alarm bot. And this is beautiful from Sentinels, beautiful from Pancada. Unfortunately, they lose Zekin on the other side of the map, and that might open the door. That's less as well. Taking full advantage of this one. Pop flash round the side. Kawazin lays claim to it. Paves his way as well now, taking all that space. But how do they want to approach this one? A bit of spam, but they've slowed it down. Willing to 
run all the way over towards B. Instead, it's a complete opposite Time direction. Jump. Guess what? That alarm bot wasn't cleared earlier, so it's going to give them a good indicator. Now they got to know. Heading over towards A. Dash forwards, but still, it's a 3v5. What can you really do on this bonus? Dash forwards. Spike's time to get planted. My guy hasn't been cleared. Looking for any sort of timing, and he does get rewarded. He is falling. Not going to have any of those smokes and walls now to try and offset this one as the fight's still being taken. All in his face, marked into the corner. He's being watched for, though. That's two players ready and waiting, standing at guard, making sure that nobody can push past this point. Oh, broken. 2v4. Just seems so damn unlikely, especially when Kawazin is able to get lurks like that. Very clean from Loud. The opening kill onto second on B, we didn't quite catch, but that's a game changer. And then Sassy gets caught out, maybe trying to equalize over by double doors. Sent almost not with quite the read on where the pressure was coming from at that point in the round. So they haven't inflicted very much damage there onto Loud's economy. And in fact, coming into this, is Marv just going to run a Sheriff? The economy's a little bit all over the place, Sen. I mean, yeah, it's seconds great. opting into the Operator. It's all fine on everybody apart from Marv, but with Marv being such a big playmaker for the Sentinel side so far, it feels weird to see him without that gun in his hand. You almost want a rifle in his hands, don't you? So there's that high tide that the desk were talking about, coming out from two E's, and it blocks Marv's point of view out, threatens the mid lurk, stops Sassy from getting any info. Although, he can tell by the spam there's people there. This time, actually making sure that they take that space. Allowed. So have that presence of mind to break a lot of that utility. It's so a weird setup from mid. Sentinels. Yeah. Because they've got Zekken incredibly deep on A. They need somebody to watch this oh. lurk. They probably should have been here five, ten seconds and ago. And this fight. Sassy and Aspart. It's all about who gets the best read on it. This time, it's Sassy. Sassy sits him down. I made you, kid. <laughs> Flash, second, force the fire, still has the dash. Has not activated it, but it's hit. Attempt of it trying to come through, Sarak. Oh. oh my goodness, gets away with murder there, but lovely movement, just dodging that second shot that was going in death at the back of the side, trying to anchor this one. Snakebite doesn't clear him, round the corner, round the side, cove up, reload, spray down, moving forwards, it is watched for, but are you aware of that one? Spraying it around the corner, it's marked. Gets the rifle in the middle of all of that chaos, and he does manage to close it out. Huge defensive round from Sentinels. Uh, even with Zekken fumbling his position in A main. Missed three op shots, I think, there onto Sadak. But overall, Here. it's that flood coming through. And Here. crucially, the fact that Sentinels are actually being able to hold on to back site control. Look how aggressive Sassy is able to push up here, because Def is controlling the back of the default box. If Death gets flushed out of that position and runs away to Flowers or Secret, Sassy can't be as aggressive and bold there. He just doesn't know if there's going to be people ready to meet him. I'd like to see Loud pushing a little deeper, realizing that that's happening. But it's hard to get a read in the middle of all the chaos. Really? Seekers, Viper's Pit, Loud set up for a fast A-pop. Trying to make the most of it. Flash around the corner. No indicator. Seekers are now online though. Clearing all the way through. Trailblazer as well. Had it with a phantom. Phantom Frame span. Down. Yeah, it's right might, through the smokes. It might be your best way of winning this round. Dash forward stop. Loud not eager to give up anything. They still want to be trying to barrel their way through into this fight. But look at all this utility. Just blocking their way. An interesting cove. Down to the side, but it's being broken, being sprayed through, and it really does feel like a coin flip. Anyone's game, the counter spam right through the wall. Who can make the most of it? Player advantage, of course, for Loud here, but they still haven't quite got the spike down. A bit of a tap on it. Trying to bait the spam, trying to bait the positions, and a re-approach around the corner. Kawazin doesn't have a rifle. What is going on? The turret's even getting a piece of the pie. Kills being claimed here. Another tap of it. Sentinels are just picking them apart. All the way through, and death with three. Same issue rears its head again for Loud there. Sentinels and Death in particular is able to hold on to the control of that back area. And it's just not aggressive enough from Loud to flush those players out. Yeah. Look at this, they've just got such control, and that allows Death to kind of have other players flood in behind. How to keep these positions? 
They're, they're not getting pushed out and having to play retake. They're just standing their ground and fighting. It is monstrously good the way that they're playing off each other as well. What a difficult call it is. Cloud taking that time out, of course, but Get out of my way. I'm going to save into it. At this point, you're basically accepting you're having to play to run it all the way to OT because it's sent one round away from that map point. Walls up. Slightly different high tide there, cutting its way across. And look at Marv with the one way, snake bite. Make sure he can't be pushed, but backs away and... And crucially, doesn't make noise this time, so he can't get easily swung. Yeah, there's no punish just there. There was an attempt, you could see Aspas did swing through. So far, it's cautious, and it needs to be at that. They're gonna move forwards here. No alarm bot this time. It is oh, only oh. Pancada, but he's great for the first. Absolute Sigma play there, ADS with a Phantom, but it's Pancada. And he just backs away as well, doesn't get greedy, gives up the space. He realizes, okay, I got the first kill. They could be anywhere, you can see it. Aggressive pings now, and it's Flowers that wants to be taken. It's a contact push all the way through, and it's watched for. Fully aware of it, and that's safer position from Pancada. 30 seconds left. Knows where to place himself, doesn't give anything away. The reads from Sassy and Pancada in this map have been sublime. Elite, and with Dash just going out of fashion there, Aspas are forced to use it, disengages back early. Now the dog, Trailblazer, is going to clear its way into the back of the side, making sure nobody's holding any close angles. The weapons are just not good. It's going to take heroics, Aspas with the knives. Anything to sail their way through, but not ready for this one. The lurk there from Marv, coverage is there through the wall. Last player standing, it's less. Blind as a bat, cannot see a thing. Sentinels reaching at map point. Insane Long. stuff. And like I said, these reads coming through from Sassy and Bancada are honestly unbelievable. And I know Match that people will think, oh, well, of course they understand how Loud play Pearl. Right they, they were on that team, they get it. But right Loud have there. only started right playing there. Pearl and being good at it with this new roster and this new composition. I mean, they literally, prior to 2023, Loud have played right Pearl there. once. <laughs> right. Right there. And they lost to Optic. It was a 13-3, it wasn't close. Loud weren't that good. So this is just the Sentinels players having such a read on the game. And look at this again. They've got so many people tucked up here. Just playing off the op. Oh, the disrespect. Loud running all the way up, but right into the stack. It's sent with a realization. The foresight, the setup. And Sarak and Les are the last two players standing to try and claw their way back. Right now, it's looking all Sentinels. Space vacuumed up. They're gonna spam there from the Vandals. Back and forth exchange, but no kills. And Lockdown has to be used. Why not? Everything at your disposal just to clear back that area. Claim it back because the spike has dropped at their feet. Dan doesn't even clear that much, does it? And think about what must be going through Loud's heads right now. How on earth have we got ourselves in this position? How are we this is losing in. to Sentinels here? Done and dusted. Les will hold on. He'll get his two. But the most to do. It's a 1v3. Viper's pit dropped down just for an attempt at trying to cross through. But look at the spam. Dodging, ducking, weaving past the bullets with 30 seconds remaining. Sentinels. 30 seconds They're on left. the cusp of it. And look at the discipline. They back away. They give him the space because they realize, guys, listen. Give him the spike. He's got no spike. option. What's, What's he going to do? Run it away? With 20 seconds? Not likely. Losing to time would not be dignified here. Les is going to... Les is going to try it. Tara take the contact. They know he's pushed forwards. No choice whatsoever. Has to stick it. And it's unwinnable. Center.
comfortable in these spots. Marv just played tons of Astro, obviously. Sassy, most played characters over. And Zekin used to play Jet for Exet on this map too. Now we're looking here towards a B trap play for Sentinels. Yeah, off Pancada's positioning. But instead, this looks like a very quick C split. All the way, working away through, and you can see just how powerful those smokes are. The wall's going all the way up to just get them complete access to it. A reflash and a repeat. What a cara, they were tempting to re-clear that one, but less contains. Look at that on 15 health dropping back now. Tuiz is also weak. How do Sentinels get this one done? No flashes. I mean, the fault line will be coming back up in a second, maybe so comboed hard. with the recon dart. They can't find less. Yeah, and less is just that extra element, that backstab who's just going to be waiting, sitting here while this hit starts to come through. Dart's taking care of. There's nothing else to accompany it. There needs to be kills going their way. And, well, it's even. Sassy. 148 health, yet still making the most of it. It's three. But now time. Time is running low. So low on either side. Aspas on 19 health as well. Can't reload. Can't give away the position. But it's all the time pressure on Sassy. He's also low and he has to stick it. And it's just not winnable. Clutch there for Aspas. Cool, calm, collected. Big pistol round for Loud to acquire. You see a couple of the things that Sean was talking about on the desk there. The C Viper wall that's being put down. Uh, but also, how much utility they have there. Just an overwhelming garage. What I love that I'm seeing in the retake, however, is how Sassy is playing that one. It's classic Sassy Sova. Very safe positioning. Trading out his teammates without exposing himself to too many angles. The safest pair of hands in Valorant. Double initiator comms are quite good at controlling up this A main area. There was an attempt there. In fact, more than an attempt. Look at the damage. Oh, Zekin could have got away with a kill there. I was seeing with the heal, though. He's going to be able to top less back up to a good amount of health. This is pretty interesting. I mean, Death has a shorty over towards B. There's a couple of players A. He, you know, in reality, Sentinel should not be winning this round. But with how insane their individual form has looked, Screen you down. start to believe in moments. You really do. <laughs> like this. You hold your breath. Just a moment, but they don't have good guns. It's all about these opening engagements. And well, enough shots rattle off. There was openings. Bit of peel attempt. As you can see, the stun was there, but fouling the way through. Better Nicely guns at done. the end of the day. And yeah, they're able to just take that space easily enough. And take a look at the Viper wall here that Sadak has put Five down. Planted. So it it cuts off information and allows you to lurk down short at the beginning of these rounds. And then also, you can drop it whenever you like. So if you're a defender and you're trying to hold long or short, suddenly the wall's down and there could be attackers behind it. It's also useful for cutting off CT, as you see here. Marv just cut out from the, ac uh, from the action. So they've demonstrated in the first two rounds two really important Viper walls that Sean was talking about on the desk that are really... Sentinels are going to have to play around these. They've got to have some kind of counter plan. Yeah. And they, they themselves are not running a sky, so you can't go and just try and flash through. Hello? Two years? Confusing. Okay, well, wait, a bit of a wait. confuse here. No one was waiting for this one. He I mean, he's got time. enough time. He's got more than enough time. He's been sticking this long enough, but maybe a bit of an error there. I Let's mean... Take a look at it. I mean, two years was literally... Two years must have active. been disconnected there. Must have been. But it may well have happened late enough in the round that that is not rolled back. Yeah. Obviously going to take a technical Have pause. A look at that. And I'm sure people are going to look at it, but to be honest there, Bren, Loud had enough players alive that they could have still stopped that Diffuse from coming through. They the rest of the gone. Loud players messed that up, not just the fact that Tuiz was gone. Back and force things into a strange position here. Two Spectres, three rifles for Sentinels heading in, and Loud still kept some weaponry from the prior round because of those players that backed off in the post plan. Bit of a team flash there. Just for about a moment. Now you're seeing it. High tide. Another one as they push their way through into garage. And I think Kata's lucky to get out away with his life. A bit of shots rattle Poison off as well, back and forth between them. And this high tide, actually, that Tweez is throwing. It's for a bit of garage control, but then it also would allow you to sneak into B. And both connectors been smoked off. That's gonna draw the defenders towards the B site and make A a little easier to walk up. You can see Zekin just looking for that information. Sean was talking about how you went for a wide swing short on a prior round. Now going to re-clear with the drone. It's all about the timing. You can see the jump spot here by Death. Wow, Sadak's crosshair placement was good. Who's on it? Not quite landing a shot. Fast moving forwards though. But he's dealt with. 
cleaned up onto the side of the smoke and plenty of personnel ready for Sentinels to try and meet them right into the weaponry. Down A. Tanag left with so much to do, but eventually shut down there and three rifles staying in the hands of the Sentinels players, keeping that economy nice and even. Yeah, still looking decent for Sentinels. One player can drop, I mean, pancada has got huge amounts of money. And loud, so now we now we start the game kind of proper, right? Both teams have those rifles on board, and we get to see what Sentinels' defensive adjustments look like. And it looks like they want to go early aggressive at the beginning of this round. Is this going to be the Fnatic play? It looks like a dart is going to come over the top and possibly Zekin dashing down mid. This could be that Fnatic set play. Yeah, there's a stun. Down to the side, only clears a little bit of mid here. Actually, doesn't go deep into the spawn. It's an aftershock and a Hunter's Fury, though. That supplements him, but Liss is ready. Oh, and that is disrespectful. Oh, my word. Second falling. Bit of bite being taken out of the round. Now, Ford and Loud. Happy to take all that space. Aspas on the high ground angle here. Sassy. Nothing blocking his way, reckoning. Can't quite stand his ground. I still avoid it for now. Right, the flank. Here. We've got a fight between Les and Def. Def broke the alarm bot here. So Les knows. Positioning is known and everything comes out to this one fight. Hey, that is not a confident fight to take there. Def loses it. That's revealing. It's a 3v5 now for Sen. You might have to start thinking otherwise about trying to play this one for a bit of a fast retake because this post plan setup is so difficult. I think this is a save here. I mean, maybe they can get another ninja to fuse, but yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's likely. Unlikely. And yeah, just playing for the exits, holding those angles, making sure that they keep the guns. I mean, Pancada's here. Exits are really good here for Sentinels. If they can drop weapons oh out of Loud's hands, dead. it's good. Rushed, yeah. Pancada's managing to at least hold his ground, but not for much longer. So two to two. That's going to be the score line. The scrappy back and forth beginning, isn't it, for this map two? Certainly is. Weapons on board again, though. Sentinels still fairly far away from having their economy broken. And this is where you start to get those alts cycling. So now Kalantin with the Seekers online on that attack side. And then if they get the plant down, potentially, they would have a post plant uh, lockdown to work with. The loud composition has some unusual alts like that Viper's Pit that you don't normally play against on Haven. And if Sentinels are playing full retake, you can see them again trying to play aggressive on another part of the map. That's bad at A lobby control, but look at how good this Viper wall is! Oh, that's his elbow! It sticks out like a sore thumb, and there you go, Sen. An instant capitalization, but the same high tide. Sean was talking about it in the desk as well in that short break that we had, how good it was at just really putting the pressure on the anchoring player, forcing them to play back and off the site for the retake. Tuiz goes for the plant. Less right dead, there. so no post-plant lockdown available. Cove being thrown aggressively here. Actually, helps keep Aspas alive, who would have taken a little bit of spam. This pull doesn't really seem synced up with too much else. Every time there's a piece of util used, there's something else in response. Stun. Lay it across now to Seekers as well. Splits them through, but already just flooding into the back of the side. It's Sentinels trying to take the space, trying to scale down to Sadak. Last alive! That's second with three. Huge retake from Sentinels. I thought they would get pushed back there. I mean, the, the investment of the Seekers, too, and nothing much to show from it. All coming from CT. They Loud had a player in Garage. Yeah. Loud had an ultimate to be able to work with. In theory, a bunch of things that could have worked nicely for them. But everybody on Loud just getting stuck behind default there. I gotta give credit to Def as well. There was a fault line in the middle of that retake. It was beautiful, landed on top of the box as well and just made its way across the side. I believe two players were caught by it, stunned up. But now you're starting to see a bit of a change in the setup. This operator in the hands of Zekin. Again, another thing that was spoken about, a disrespect shown to this Viper wall. But I love this. I think getting Zekin on this deep line, if he can hop on the box even in a short, he can just be left there. And he gives sure, so much info. He might end up having to retake with an operator, but I think the informational value you're getting from him is worth it. Ooh, and that is just spam. Forward. That's just spam through Double Doors Garage. Through Double Doors, but no time wasted. Laura immediate with their response. Taking up all the space into B. Mark wasn't looking for it. One angle watch for, but not the other one as well. And they are just slipping into... Every single gap in the defensive protocols. 
Aspas pushing deep into spawn here. Zekken, he's watching for it. How Seems do the aware. Sentinels players know this kind of stuff? Reminiscent of Pearl. Maybe heard the jump as well off to the Welcome side. To Just holding the angle, but this is it. Comes down to the timing. Doesn't expect it. Three in a round for Aspas. He has been that difference making with the Vipers pit dropped. How do you even play this one? Flash to read big. Aspas is not even blind. Playing around a util. Tank in the dark. That is just pure disrespect, your former teammate. Denied the ace. Operator picked up, but it has to be that save. It's pretty important here, actually, because Sassy's going to be able to drop his teammate. Pick up a rifle. Drop the operator. Poison's off. And it's going to help them put a buy together that's still fairly decent. Zekin got value out of the op as well. He managed to pick up less on the other side of short. But Loud kind of overwhelmed. The B pressure, you're starting to see some of the cracks that you would expect, honestly, from a team like Sentinels that has had so little time together. Yeah. Uh, the way that Mark wasn't quite ready for the pressure coming through on B and got caught, bullet to the side of the head, just not really knowing where to face. It's difficult when you're playing the smokes in a comp like this because you're so far away from the information on the other side of the map. You rely very heavily on being fed good comms to dictate where you should be looking and where you're going. This time, Zekin opping down C. Get Can be difficult to get value out of the operator. When you're playing a jet as well into these double smokes comms because of things like this. That was a five roll that was just thrown from safety, locks off one of those angles and the knives for Aspas. How does he want to claim this one? Spamming the common corners, making sure that they clear out garage and remove that turret. So really now Zekin is starting to feel the pressure, but it's a stack from Sentinels. Three of their players. Make sure they watch this B side. Maybe a bit of a read for it as well. Well, Marv's taken out. On one side of it, and there wasn't really a swing from Sen. They didn't fall for the bait. Aspas was locking down that one angle, but now you're seeing it. Dog to re-clear, and they want to pivot right back into a C hit. Zekin. It's a difficult ask for him. Reach out right away, all the way through. On in Thunder Hunter Scurry, everything being expended. The kitchen sink and all. Just to try and help out Zekin. Meanwhile, Sassy with his Hunter's Fury. He Kill threw a long-range dart as well from A at the early round. And it is going to be A the result here. If he saves his recon, it could be absolutely imperative for them in the retake. Strength but that's round. what Sentinels are going to have to play. I don't think Zekin used left. many of his knives, so I don't think the Operator's going to be a large problem for them. Now you Sen can focus run. on trying to play this retake. Lockdown. It's used close, but a lockdown for a lockdown with 19 seconds left. Looks like an attempt here to try and take the fight early. Deny the plant, and he does just oh! Second, that's a beastly performance. Left. And there's just no time left. Play is detained, six seconds left. Can even access the spike? Nope. I have the spike. The round is lost just like that. Quick decision making from Sentinels, and it earns them a round. What an incredible scenario there. Sadak sprinting back into the site to try and get the plant down when four players were detained for the retakers. And it all comes down to that. Nasty stuff. Even if Zekin doesn't get the second, he wins the round just by killing the plants of that. Yeah. Incredible work. Zekin looks on fire in this main duelist role. I think Zekin's got the quality to be able to play a lot of different stuff for the Sentinel squad. But he's... He's able to hard carry games from this spot. Arguably, he has done in the past from Sova, too. I think the dart was good, actually. I think that was getting blocked by the Viper Wall. Senna going to be partly aware of this. What a read here to have three players A not playing aggressive, just kind of waiting for the hit to come through. But it's difficult. For Zekin, because he doesn't know if they've crossed. Look at him. He's adjusted his crosshair placement now for that one angle. Drone was broken. I think that's a bit of a tell that there could be a player close on that angle, but... But otherwise, Zekin would be facing the right side. Yeah, surely. and he's repositioned, and he's pushing up. There was a flash. Sassy pushed up. It's all comes down to this, and he spotted him. Aspas, close to the corner. Not seeing any time wasted, but oh my goodness, it's so cautious. This is a contact push. All the way up, Zekin does well to get the one. Def, you got to play your life. Backs away. The loud... We have access to the site now. Spike starting to get planted. Oh, the fight in mid. Pancada takes down less and the spike dropped. This now becomes doable for Sentinels. A 3v3. Push back. 
Can't ball back a ball, not to be certain of it, but you've handed that spice the op. An exchange, swaps it around with the rifle in his hands, flash avoided and walking, wading right through the high tide. Pankard none the wiser! And four in the round, Aspas. Immediately answering back, Josh, and listen, this term a lot, but this really is just back and forth, back and forth, isn't it? It certainly is, but this A Viper wall has caused Sentinels so many problems. They've been trying to counter it a bunch, but look at this. Oh, this was after the drone came through. That was the kill that Aspas was able to get onto Sassy, and it's a freebie because Sentinels had bad information. As the drone comes down short, it's... And that's not what we're really seeing. We're seeing Sentinels forced to play full set retakes. I got yous, okay? And I don't think that's going to be a strength of theirs with such little time. We're beginning to the round. Boys and orb admitting toxin screen down. Work being put in by Loud at the beginning of the round, so you can see just breaking that door. And also, Marv getting himself into cubby here. They know that Sadak does oh. not get onto the oh. angle. Beautiful, what a beautiful adjustment. Sadak has to throw that uh, Viper Orb from further back, so he's not there in time to see Marv sneak into Cubby. Great adjustment, turret's broken though. It's just loud, walking their way through. Spike not on B just yet, but they want to take their time with it. Of course, they've got about a minute on the clock, but hoping to take some fights as the smokes dissipate. Cascade in the face though, just to replace it. And this time, in his tracks. this time the defenders are much more well set up for the B pressure. Marv's not getting caught, Sassy with a nice jiggle. Can Loud convert this in a 4v5? They've got nice positions. But it's difficult to try and retake, I think. Flash and a drone, comboed up, move. reckoning is used. That's on the side of Loud, that's going to be pushing them back here. Nice start, but Aspaz pushes them away. Draft dash away, but he realizes he has to play on the site. There's a cosmic divide in his face. Can't play the post plants too easily. And now starting to be swarmed. It's about the coordination. It's about hitting the shots. And a crossfire setup. Well, it's good enough. Enough damage done to Marv that the shorty will finish it off. But Sassy could be the difference maker. Double down two. And you're right, Josh. The utility's there to try and stop this one. A tap onto the spike, and I think they've realized it. No time left in the round. Zekin wants to get out of the yard. They have to save the guns and loud. We'll claim it. Oh. Oh, and Sassy just gets away with the Vandal. Very nice post plan played by Loud in a 4v5. Things could have gotten sticky there, but you will always have that last line of defense, which is less. Double Nana Swarm on the spike. I still think the way that Sentinels fought back into this was very decent, especially considering that Death's Breach Flashes really didn't catch on to anyone. But once more, you see Loud's uh, sight executes with Tuiz's utility giving them free plants. They're getting into post plants where Sentinels have to play set retakes, oh. so that's not what Sen want. A battle yeah, waiting yeah. to be taken. Flash over the top. Second can't take the angle, and look at how difficult it is. He's hopping, he wants a free sight line. He's not gonna be getting it, not against this. Cascade in his face, and this is risky. The rest of his team doesn't have the weaponry. It's all on him. What can he do, dog? His feet broken, dashes back to disengage, but already they're being flooded, swarmed every angle. Sassy will fall. Still seconds in, flick of the wrist and doesn't find the target. The snake bite is gorgeous from Sadak there. Stops anybody swinging from left side default. And they tried to flood people in. They tried to get Death running in there to help. And they just couldn't. Loud with the better weaponry here too. So that doesn't look like too much that the Sentinels players can get working. The loud system, the loud executes. I'm finding them all the success. Yeah. Sentinels can't challenge early round because they've got a Viper or Harbor utility in their face. And then once it comes to the... You, you notice as well that Loud are going for the site exec often as Sassy drones. They're picking the timing. Immediately, as soon as Sassy's in the drone, they know that, first of all, Zekin's going to be opping and trying to follow it. And Sassy can't reposition, can't shoot back. Yeah, it's a player out of the game. Uh, points. You can see Mars had to be the exit. That's a lovely little gift. Okay. Oh, well, loss, but damage done. Life. And an operator as well. They've been saving this one all the way through. It's a family heirloom, Josh. <laughs> yeah, it's been passed down generation to generation, hasn't it? They keep losing the rounds, but they keep being able to buy ops. So, really, that, that could be a big difference maker. It's a nice three piece. But Sentinels are going to have to start putting some rounds on the board. That's a 
difficult task for them. You know, we talked about the adjustments that sent on us as a team. This comp is unusual. Not many teams in America running it, but look at this from Loud. No time wasted again. Very reminiscent the opening round here, but a bit of a team flash. Aspas. These executes just look sublime from Loud. So well orchestrated, so well executed, and Aspas not lacking any confidence. New player that ascended on his roster here. Marv's removed from the fight. Not gonna have his utility, and look at this reclear. Trailblazer. Cards out a nice little power of reactions from Aspas. It's pure enough, and look at this. The dash active, he wants a little bit more, but... Sentinels are already keen to just get the hell out of there. They want any part of him here. Shane, the rifle picked up. One Too much damage remaining. done. Too much to overcome. And the, wow. <laughs> the family heirloom survives. Will it survive? That's the thing. They are swarming him. They're like, listen, you've had this for too many rounds now. Finally taken care of. Finally taken out the hands of Zekken. There's some Last spice in this game now. Yeah. It's the second or third time we've seen some of the bodies getting shot. Loud players coming back in with some fire on map two. Loud currently look unstoppable. They've got a reckoning for the next as well. They did get caught up a little bit by Sassy Hunter's Fury when they went for a C here prior. There are now four players stacking A. Sentinels are determined. We cannot give up this area at the beginning of the round, even if we have to play full C reading. This many players. How do they want to try and fight this one? There's a Hunter's Fury as well. There was the smallest bit of presence, but the shot's presumably going wide here. And the rest of Loud, it's a reaction play. The reckoning is used. Pankata can't stand his ground. He can't spam the angles. And already, all that util clearing and cleaving his way through. It's such a similar play now. We've seen it time and time again, but it's too much to offset. And Sentinels have been able to find no answer for it. Less though fight caught planted. this time. A reflank coming through. Marv and Death are going to have nice garage positions. I think that's why you're starting to see that stack over towards A at the beginning of the round. There's a flash for Cowanzine and Aspas here. Oh, this would be it. so bold. Risky to push this as well, though, because look at the positioning. Sentinels are back. They absorb the aggression. A pop flash around the corner, but second, a difficult player to take out. And right now he's got the angle. Watch for Cowanzine still wins it, and he could be the backstab, Last could be the thorn in their sides. But Marv! Pushes them back, and Marv has just been magnificent. Stick onto the fuse, line them up, but it matters not. Five and around claim here for Sen, a respectable finish to this first half. But at the same time, <laughs> they're, they're fortunate. It's going to be a bit of an uphill battle. Loud just looks so coordinated with the way that they're using the Viper Harbor comp here. Like the desk was talking about earlier, it's only really them and Furia that are trying it. And they kind of mastered it. Yeah. It's been looking superb so far. Part of the strength of this comp is it's a lot to adjust to. When you consider what Sentinels are dealing with, obviously. Rolls, chopping and changing. Oh, the push. Hitting it on the head. A lot, but it's the push all the way up. Behind the walls, and a fight to be taken here, but a stun. It's a good reaction. Already all that space in Garage has taken gain for them. Dealing with this Killjoy utility, and they're leaving that late backstab. That's Pankata as well, who's in that really far back position. I mean, I think that's everything Loud were hoping for there. That Sentinels were in grass as they pushed down mid. But with the Garage player getting overwhelmed, as soon as Les dies, the round just looks very difficult for them. And it's, oh my goodness, a game of just cat and mouse. Pankata just trying to stay alive this entire time while the rest of the hit is all going through. Oh my goodness, Aspas is so job trying to deal with this one, but it's crossfire set up. Too strong, too potent. Last player left. Aspas just cannot <laughs> claim his prize. He will not be given it. There's no easy shots. So hard earned, and he won't be getting it. Go for the knife as well. The disrespect shown to the final boss himself. You gotta be kidding me. It really does feel like it's getting personal, Josh. You do not toy with Aspas like that. Go for the knife? <laughs> Sentinels do not know what they're inviting upon themselves. Aspas, 17 and 8 currently, looking on the defensive side. I mean, he's going to be picking up ops later on. We've seen how good his operator is usually. Sentinels are playing with something dangerous there. But a pistol round for them. Yeah, it's spectacular. To set this one up on an even score line for 7 7. They love that. Ahead. Early faked pressure towards short there. Recon dart. The flash comes through. Absolute silence. Sentinels have not heard a thing. The turret shot in mid. 
So they have an idea that Les has to be somewhere around B. In fact, Les is in short with the rest of his team. Pushing oh up. Do they catch a timing? My goodness. It's all about this, isn't it? <gasps> They've got a push up. Backs to the wall. None the wiser, but finally, okay, the util's going to be spotting it. And that's the Killjoy turret dealt with. Pankata, aware that at least somebody's going to be pressuring that area. Spike going down. If they all want to be playing this from post. Spike planted. Be a hard task indeed to try and play this from the long angle. Pankata needs help, and Marth is here. Flash doesn't catch anything. Pankata does need help. Luckily, Sport's going to be there. There was an Anaswarm to push them back that was placed a little bit prior. Turret in their face, trying to beam them down. The guns in their hands. Tends for it to get a little bit dangerous. You never know. But they've got to watch down, and they know at least one or two of the players is there. Easy everybody, easy. everybody on Sentinels looks so sharp today. On an individual form level. One enemy Let's see what Les can get done here, playing that angle. Not much at all. So four surviving. And you're exactly right, Josh. It's, Sentinels really do feel like they've woke up on the, the right side of the bed today. It's just on every cylinder firing off. I'm doing the FPX buy here. Three One Bulldogs saved. Remaining. Two players not investing in the round means that Sentinels are going to have a very potent bonus. Three Bulldogs, two rifles coming up against Aspas with the Operator. Look at the money. 7-7, seven, seven, dead even. It's a very deep Viper wall, the kind that they run on the pistol. It might make Sentinels scared to take space over towards B. Bit of a feign that they could be pushing and taking a bit of that A control from Sen. You can see that, but they were pushed back by the flash. It's the same idea, actually, as what they did in round 14. Just an early fake pressure towards A, and they're going to end C. But the problem here is Aspas with the operator. He's a demon on his angles. You have to be so careful of how you clear this one. On the high ground, it was Jumpy! What a trade! Yeah, Zekin does well to get that one. Dash forwards with a smoke at the top. It wasn't an updraft, so Les should be aware that nobody's up top there. Moving forwards, and wow. Complete patience. Oh, oh, work, and it's Les. This it's is easy. his playground. Angry from the position. There was no follow-up there, and they know where the last two are, at least one of them. Beaming him down with the bullets. Mark dropped to 31 health. Sentinels have still got a buy for the next round. This is their bonus, of course. But at the moment, no real damage done. No. The up can be saved. Aspas didn't die in an aggressive position. The spike is completely lost. And um, what a way to anchor that. 30 seconds left. A big gap in the execute, not being able to clear that back clap position. To see you know, a bit of that evidence, you know, that Sentinels, listen, this is a, a team that have chopped and changed with the roles, with the players. Not much time to practice. That's going to happen. But so far, it feels like, honestly, that raw firepower has been carrying them through, and we haven't really been witness to many of those moments. No, in some sense, it's actually unfair of me to even expect that their executes would be looking decent. They've had two two days, three days of prep with this squad. But at the same time, the quality that they showcased on Pearl has made me expect a little more. Yeah. But you're absolutely right. And if Lau can find those pockets, the small areas where Sentinel's pugginess leaves holes, like, for example, maybe Here. a mid-push with an op. Now over Pete by Sen before the turret's active, and look at Marv, up to his own devices, just making sure that he can take any and all fights. That push by Sadak punished. Does that open things up now? The recon dart used in Garage, but they didn't break the turret there, so it doesn't really feel like there's any Garage control by Les. Uh, sorry, by Sentinels. Les reclears. Double pushed up. I think Pankata spotted? spotted a rifle there. He's backed away. Yeah, he's holding it. Yeah, he's, he's holding for the repush. this. Is there going to be any call? Maybe not. Doesn't even need any help. Marv is on the world's longest lurk. It's all over the place, isn't it? That, oh, look at that, though. Calling for the rest of the team to come back and meet him over on the seaside. Unless realizes that they've left a gap now that nobody follows up off the drone. Does he reclear this, though? Does he expect this? And I think the answer is going to be one that the loud fans will like. And while well, give him a taste of his own medicine, why not hold the fire for just a bit of time, seeing. Didn't get the most out of it. Stars drop down though in two years. Okay, no one in that one. 30 seconds left. Pop looks so clean. Like he's never left. Now Aspas has the family heirloom. 
It's just one operator getting passed down. But this, that's a very nice round by Sentinels that works on the strength that Marv is going to bring to this team. He's extremely solid at being able to lock down one side of the map on his own. As you saw, punishing Sadak with the push down C. And then he's also got great intuitive lurk timings. And they really want to take this operator out. They've spotted the position of Aspas. Pushed up onto the corner. Util. Oh, not using it to clear him. He's pushed all the way up. He's got another dash active. Could make this quite expensive. Quite pricey. Sendot will still want to try and take the fight to him. It looks like the answer is no. Corralled for now. 8-8. Eight, eight. Dead even between these teams. Aspas might even feel incentivized to drop the operator to somebody else here because Sadak can't buy and Aspas is going to be hoarding the wealth if he has these knives and the op. Really was payback this, wasn't it? Yeah. We just saw Les win around from almost the exact same position. Marvel teams are trading maps against each other. So I did think that this kind of like, you know, chapter of Loud being a little bit shaky was over with that win last week, but... Listen, so far, they are being pushed to the brink. Aspas, by the way, with 20 kills, more than double the way. next player on his team. Perhaps it's just a case of moving away from where he is on defense. If they get a sniff of where you the operator is, it. can they go elsewhere? Cosmic Divide, down. splitting up this C site. And Sadak now has to anchor this one. You can see the Viper War drop down, stun and a pull into the back, and he is separated from the rest of his team. There's no flood attempts, but well, it was just a bit of a fake and a bit of a pivot. Even baited me because the spike is nowhere close to C. And it seems that Loud have bought it. But also, the spike is not quite into A yet either. Cowanzine's not going to contest this, so Sentinels are going to be able to pull off a good fake. And not just that, they got the opening kill out of it too as Sadak falls. That's being dumped into it now. We'll see if Loud can play this retake effectively. Util pushing all the way through and it cuts up the site. A lovely cascade. Well, Pancada opens himself up a little bit too wide here, dropping down. The hell play is dealt with. See the dart lighting them all up, but Sassy, what more can he find? One kill down. Fires a second. Left alone. It's a 1v2. Oh my goodness! And he knows where Aspas is! seen so many moments like this from Sassy in this game so far. He has just been reawakened since moving back onto Initiator. He lives for these moments. The execute itself was gorgeous, but then playing off his recon dart to find one and winning a 1v3. I thought I was done. This flick onto Les. Oh my goodness. It should have been done. The bold Retake. grandfather of Brazilian Valorant strikes again. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a round that's going to hurt as well for the loud players. Going to be thinking about that. Doing his own former team like that as well. Yeah, Knocking I know. Knocking down onto an eco. Marv is always going to be watching this. He's so diligent. But gives it up this time so that Sassy can be over here. And this looks like another fake. I mean, the drone is coming up C. Nobody around there. Sentinels are not actually taking space on the other side of the map just yet. But we can see that everybody from Loud has given A. And Sentinels are currently worried as well about a bit of a potential stack with the weaker buy of Loud, you know. They can sure that they keep all their players in one area. And they do have players here towards A. How are they going to be dealing with it? I should have died. That doesn't see much. Well, Kawazin on the angle. Mark dealt with. Less as well, still in the fight. This is a 3v3, and when Aspas has knives, you never know. Rolling Thunder pushed and committed out of them. The lockdown also gained as well. Not too sure if he earned that with a kill prior, but it's starting to increase the heat. That is a weird Rolling Thunder for Death to have used. I think he'd love to have that to get back into the site now. And it's getting dangerous. The Util's pulled out of them. One of the Nano Swarms already used. Aftershock as well. No one's even tapped this spike. There's still plenty of time. Pressure now. Sadik's time to get on top of it. Pankata. Critical kill to get, but sticking it. Half off of it. Half on the defuse. What a flick from Sadak, and it's all down to second. A tap on the reload. No one's sticking this one. The orb goes down. Just trying to hunt down these players. Time! And 
just about earned clutch for second, but my goodness, was it close. And Antaiko that gets far too sweaty Ooh. there for Sentinels. I think Def a bit early on the trigger with his ultimate, and things almost went so, so wrong. I think the kill that Pankata gets onto Aspas in that battle down short, that defines whether or not that retake is winnable. One enemy <laughs> well played by Zekin, keeping his cool. Wow. Loud is still in this. Aspas 22 and 12 picks up the operator again and takes it for a walk down long. I tell you what, the flash recon plays really have been working though for Sentinels. The coordination from Sassy and Def and the way that Zekin takes space off the back of that. It all looks like it's quite fluidly, intuitively coming together. Yeah. They've been keeping it simple with the Placing beginning of these rounds as well. Just same out. flash, same dart down into the bottom of A. The threat that they are taking that control. Now maneuvering elsewhere. And that's one popped off deep here. Dash. Supplemented there as a fault line and an aftershock. Les really wants to punish this one into the corner. Well Brandon done, Town does get that kill. Lockdown's close. This is breakable. Reckoning's being used. And now it really is chaos. Thrown into the round. Snake bite into the corner. Seekers as well. It's anyone's game and everyone's blind. Two left standing. Hunter's Fury being used. Tagged onto the player. Kill needs to be found here. Mount Loose just fights and it's all down to Sassy. But he just doesn't have the space. He can't push up in time. Loud of a retake, that was all over the place. But actually really beautifully coordinated from Loud. Everything that they did there, the high tide. So they read that it was a B hit right from the beginning. There was three players ready to fight. High tide comes through, allows that uh, Zekin to be killed as he goes for the plant. And then the retake with the Seekers, with the Flash, it just puts so much extra pressure. That. And they even have that Viper Wall, which is amazing for the B retake. Yeah because all the players deep mid, they can't do anything about it. Too many layers of the smoke, you can't play that deep post plan. Yeah, that, that from Loud looks as good as their Pearl B retake. I was just thinking that, yeah. <laughs> Maybe they're just specializing B retake specifically. Same position that Aspas played in the prior round, but he wasn't cleared out. He was playing here again inside oh. the smoke. Oh, this is gonna dissipate. A couple of seconds. Flash gets info. Aspas now knows he needs to be a bit more careful. And a difficult shot to be taking. This peak on the angle, dash active, and he's out. Does he want to go again? Does he want to try and take another flick? These are the moments where we've seen Aspas just run rings around his opposition. And look at him. Confidence is boundless from this guy. Flash to try and repick there. That was to try and push Marv into a forward position, but it didn't catch onto Aspas. I mean, the, the, the movement from Aspas is amazing, but the way that he works with Kalanzin's utility is also sublime. Sets him up for so many of these fights, pushing him back onto angles where he can grab the kills. I think Aspas has like 25 kills at the moment, maybe more. So much freedom awarded to him. 3v5 for Sentinels with 35 seconds left. Hard question, but they are going to probably have to answer it with a save. 30 seconds left. And finally, a bit of breathing room for yeah. Loud. But not in terms of the score, just in terms of the time here. They're going to be able to settle down, spend the next 20 seconds with almost a miniature timeout. Okay, what do we want to adjust? What ultimates do we have up? The one away from Sadak, getting his Viper's Pit online. 10 seconds left. Could be a difference maker. I mean, the A orb would be the easiest to play for, but... Yeah. Doesn't seem likely. I don't think they'd want to disrupt their defensive setup. 10-10. Sentinels are three rounds away from delivering a 2-0 upset over the best team in America's undefeated up until this point. But at the same time, Loud have all the opportunities to come back. They've looked excellent in certain moments of this map. Their, their executes look fantastic. That retake looked incredible. Loud definitely have what it takes to especially with the Operator in Aspas's hand, start the engine really churning and get us to a map three. So knife's edge for either side. Pressure's gonna be slightly higher for Lad, you gotta imagine, on the cusp of potentially losing. It's a flash and a drone being used together. Hoping for some value with that one, but the drone does get broken. And Aspas playing anti-flash at the beginning, swinging back onto the angle, means that kind of fake, it doesn't really work. No. Caution, here. Loud are not denied any information. Instantly pick it back up. It's a big tool that's going to go missing. When Sassy uses a drone like that, it's one of the biggest tools they've got to try and find out where Aspas is playing, to try and 
work out exactly which area of the map they want to land on. That flash not getting any tags. Yeah, it gives them bad information, doesn't it? Because Sentinels are sneaking up here. And they've gained a lot of space. Still, Loud seem to be aware of it. Kawazi not willing to give it up. The stun across their feet. Tag onto the one of them. Wall over the top, round the side. Second gliding into the side. But how about this team trying to take this fight down? Spraying it down. Lovely flash round the side. Kawazi easing the pressure. 2v2 picks down to it now. It is two on two, 40 seconds remaining. Spike getting planted less. Up top of heaven, looks down, oh, doesn't find the kill. It was almost granted to him. But now they know where one of the players is. Tucks into hell here. A difficult post plan to play for Sentinels, but Aspas should retake this one with the operator. Has a dash still, now active. And activated. Tried to take one of the fight. You can see how safe Pankata's playing and it's all on Sassy to see if he can even get one here, but he's just not favored as he still wins it. He's low with the Bulldog in his hands. Not the best weapon for the job, but down to that one on one. Quick tap of the feet. Spike not planted in this position for it. Turret watches it. Lus, he knows he has time, sticks it to half, buys him a bit extra, but doesn't win the fight. And Kata, a beautiful 1v1, brings it up to 11. He doesn't miss a shot. He just doesn't miss a shot. What a beautiful thing to see Pancada and Les going head to head in the final moments there in that 1v1. <laughs> Pancada pulled on to Les's role, really, in his new team. Shows him how it's done. Big 1v1. Loud can still buy heading into the next, but Sentinels are creeping ever slowly forwards to this map win and what would be probably the largest upset we've had in this season gotta think despite the player quality that is on sentinels despite that that peak of potential they have had no time to try and acclimate and make sure that this roster is good but they are upsetting all sorts of expectations still loud not done and dusted just yet you see the viper pit drop down it's an interesting one it Locks is off part of the sea site I mean, look at what would happen if you're an attacker trying to get into the site there. Sure, you might be able to get a plant down, but you could be swung at any time through any of those yeah. smokes or the pit, especially with Coenzine's flashes. It just does not look appetizing. It's a simple game plan by Sentinels. That early pressure's applied. Pankata pushed up in a forward position here, and he's got to be a backstab. Maybe somebody can get a pick or a kill. The Sentinels explore elsewhere, but how they've got those protocols, these B hits, now they're happy to retake on them. The updraft there is a really nice idea from Zekin, seeing if anybody was playing in the Sea Connector. Seekers though, pushing forward. Zekin now into the back, and this is the time to strike! Pankata beams it down. Down to the 2v3, 25 seconds left. Where's the spike going to be landing? Well, right on the floor. It's equalized down to that 2 on 2 and Aspas has got the angle watched for. Pankata, he's got no utility, he's playing Killjoy, but a spike is available to spike. him, but... Has to try and dodge and duck and weave. Has to plan as well. The time pressure, he knows it's on him, sticking it. Does get it down now, but he's being swarmed on these angles. Updraft play to high-low setup. Needs to find him at least one of the fights. Nothing easy. And loud. Scrape their way back. 11-11. Oh, my goodness. I love the way that Aspas uses his movement. Whenever he's in these kind of situations, you will always see him updrafting, playing uh, to just drag that solo player's attention, and the other one's the person you will need to worry about, right? Aspas is going to be running around, making as much noise as possible as Kawanzin gets the either trade or spur. And yeah. he, he just didn't look comfortable. You could tell that he does not enjoy playing that controller role. And now with Marv coming in, it's just freed up Sassy to be the beast that we know he can be. That upper potential being met now, but... Time is ticking down. Decision is made. Money's being saved. It's a really weak buy here from Sen. Prior Util being cleared out. Deep smoke as well. And an attempt by Loud. They really want to push through this one. Yes, they do. Pop flash play. A lot of opportunities for the anti flash position. Sen, they could be favored. It's two on two. Or two, four, two. And Aspas is stuck. Smoke drop down. Drone's going to be tagging him out. Has to try and. Dodge and weave. Does he play Sadak out in? There. Sadak. Oh, baited. He's given a freebie, but he is instantly traded. Aspas alone into the back. Down right a. into the side. It's all down to Sassy. Moving forward. Up travel. The move on. And he surely does it.
absolute disrespect to that movement of Aspas. The man is like just Magic free point. flowing water. He's, he can't be stopped. He's so incredible in those moments. As soon as Sassy misses the spray into the jet smoke, it's really over for him. Good luck hitting that. Wiggling around like an eel in the air. That's but so Sent to deal with. Sentinels knew they were likely to lose that round. They took a timeout, they talked about it, they made a game plan for this, round 24. They can't allow games like this to slip away. Against Leviathan, it slipped away from them. Overtime on split. Otherwise, that series could have been a 2-0 win for Sentinels. Bomb grenade out. Look at that, could be looking at the final round of this map. Could be looking at that map three. Cloud want to take it there. Sentinel's going to be trying to earn their chance. Did all the way to that OT. Drone clears it through, and this time looking like a full-on execute towards C. It. Cosmic Divide this time. Keeping it simple. No fakes this no time, way. although they've done Run. it in the past. Hunter's Fury to try and offset. That's Sassy, making sure that there's no attempt of a flood back into the site. Nobody's going to push through that Cosmic Divide, but it gets a bit more difficult now. How do you want to hold this post plan? Death has been completely split up from the rest of his team. And here's the reckoning. This is where it gets really tricky. Trying to anchor onto the side. Death's going to be that first casualty. Stunned up, second close into the corner. Seeker matching him, finding him. And it's down to a two versus three. Marv's still alive, ready and waiting. Pankata needs one, needs a kill. Spam it down, spraying it down. He's the last player left. And he can't get onto the angle. It's watched for. Kills there, sticking it all the way. Loud have just about stolen it. And that's 13 11. Man number three is on the cards. To Sassy's comfort territory. I think he ends up being the better solver of the two, but more so, I think Ascent is going to come down to how comfortable these teams are at being able to uh, construct little plays on the fly. So they want to approach this attack side of Ascent, it looks like with pace. Straight away being played into the back of the side. That's an updraft over the top. And guess Aspas what? Has a shorty. Yeah, look at the back of the side. You can hear it running right into them. Shorty holding the angle anchor, and you just don't anticipate that while all this was happening. Oh, it's a call. A little bit of an adaptation. Trying to make the moves. Wading all the way through into their spawn. Sassy. Can't get the second. Flash through into the back of the side, but easily stopped in its tracks. That's going to be a pistol for loud. What a hard read from Aspas there. And that is that is pretty incredible, actually. He's, he's playing on site and then drops back with a shorty. You don't expect that on pistol. Oh, absolutely not. And that is that is crazy. Did he buy both on the pistol round? Did he buy a frenzy and a shorty and leave the shorty in backside? Potentially, yeah. I mean, that's nuts. So he or even buys... somebody else bought it for him, I'm not too sure. Well, you but... can buy one smoke and still have 150 remaining. Yeah. Wild stuff. Well, pistol goes the way of loud there. But Sentinel's already showcasing that they've got the coordination to run some fast and aggressive executes. They showed us that on Haven, too. Sentinel's a difficult map to try and chew your way through as well, though, on these attack sides. It does test that coordination. Pushes it to its limits! Aspas didn't have his dash active. Couldn't get out of oh. there. Well, that's a big loss early on. And activated a little bit too late, but still into that four on four. And guess what? Les has taken all that ground straight through B main. So this is a lot of information he's going to be providing. I think they have some idea about this. Marved was jiggling it. Kind of. Zekens <gasps> holding. Does Pankata swing? <gasps> oh my goodness. That was a straight shot across the map right into the head, I think. Sadak's weak. Les is weak. This could end up being around. This could be dangerous. The potential's there, but it has been slowed to a crawl. With 40 seconds left, okay, turret's back online. Watching that B main angle. Vancada's gonna have a bad time fighting the turret. Yeah, when he's that low. Needs help. Not a fight he wants to take. 30 seconds left. Got the backup though, so they're gonna be double swinging it now with the bash active. Shot dark close, just in case there's Util there, but over the top into the side, and it's gonna be a freebie. Look at that smoke. Lovely placement of that one, just to get everybody into the site. Ooh. Lineup almost paying off here. And all that util, everyone is so damn low. Should feel like a slam dunk for loud, but anything can happen. And it really gets hectic. Util in their hands now. Shot dart. Uh oh. That lands a little bit too close, I think, there towards the stairs and forwards into the smoke. This is where it could get dangerous, but no. 
One player left is Pancada at the back, and he's hunting for something. The right click's there. Play is weak enough, but not another kill found. It's loud. Eventually, with the safe hands. They clean this one up and go 2-0, but it's expensive. Not going to be the, the greatest bonus buy in the world, is it? So Sentinels have a good opportunity to respond back here. And I think they've figured a couple of things out, too. I mean, Aspas playing on top of that alarm bot in mid. And Marv just took a wander down mid, found that pick out of nowhere. The last time Loud lost a third map in a BO3, it was against Marv. Wow. <laughs> okay. In the group stages as well, by the sound of it. Placing swarm grenade. Placing swarm grenade. He's back with a vengeance this series. It certainly has been. Flash forwards. That's a little bit of a pop flash play here, but most teams know how to recognize this now. And look at that. No casualties. Pankata is all the way backed. It's extremely aggressive. Assassin is still droning this one out. They know that there's likely to be one player anchoring. Less is in a very dodgy spot. Oh, cross corner! Second does get it, though. There's opportunities for Lester, maybe just do that damage, anchoring it to the back of the site, but it all comes down to a lot of these timings. It looked like Aspas wanted to try and take the flank. In fact, he might still want to push in mid. And Loud's biggest strength has been their retakes on the defense side. But that was with the Viper Harbor. Okay. How good do they look here? They push them back here. The players are low enough. Darts only just been dealt with. It's going to be lighting them all up. And look at this. Loud Hands looking more than favored. And here's that flank coming through. Pankata, he has to adjust his attention. For but a moment, it's left down to Marth with 24 health left. The jump peak will do it. And a bonus round for Loud. That is just sublime. Try again. On the flip side, it all fell to pieces there for Sentinels. There wasn't much danger in that bonus round. Loud didn't have the best economy in the world. Sentinels were able to get into post plant positions that they wanted. But second with a bit of an overheat, perhaps, up towards heaven. And then they weren't able to control that A heaven sightline at all. There's nobody playing dice or playing Jenny that can swing with Sassy there. And these are the, these are the moments where you see that Sentinels are not a team that's got all of this stuff drilled. And that's okay. That's expected. But that is also where Loud are going to claw ahead in moments like that. If your Sentinels, your fears are going to be collapsing in this final map. Another win potentially in the Americas. Split that you let slip between your hands. It happened last week. That would be devastating if the story was the same again. To think only a couple of rounds away from 2 0 ing Leviathan and Loud. You hope to convert at least one of those situations. Yeah. But in this series, it just feels like it's been incredible that Sentinels even got to that point. We're certainly hoping for something similar on map three. It's an exchange of the utility back and forth as we reach that minute mark in the round. The alarm bot's not broken. See... Yeah, the alarm bot wasn't broken towards mid, but the knife didn't see anything towards A. But I do have a good setup here. Two years with a jiggle peek. Shouldn't be in too much danger, but wow, he didn't see anything. And now he's backing. And Sentinels have been gifted. Perhaps the perfect timing. Smoke though dropped down. There was something to indicate that one. Paranoia as well cuts its way through the dart. Doesn't quite reach him. Down into hell here. They're not dealing with these players effectively enough. And still opportunities to take these fights, but eventually spammed out of the position. Recon dart. Nobody broke it. Okay, doesn't scan anybody though. Smoke to replace it now. Straight through the door. Trying to play the retake. Now with the operator. Mark tags. ulted and stuck it in mid. Yeah, I mean, he... It's just in the middle of nowhere now, and it's all about this timing that he wants to take here. Forwards, one is that by Aspas. An incredible shot to return the fire back and forward, and a three on three, and still so good at it. Marv needs to get value, but he doesn't get the kill. Left just astounded, bewildered. One kill gone for him, spraying it down, knows where he is, could be sticking. Forced to overpeak it down, but Pankana saves the day. What a play by Marv. Going for that alt deep into mid, it's oh, pretty crazy. Marv. It really is. But he got it. He made it work. Yeah, I like to think that he didn't say anything in the comments when he was doing that. <laughs> Stuck it. I mean, he got the timing nicely. Had a potential double kill there onto Aspas and Kawanzin. Missed it the first time, and I'm surprised he didn't get punished. Swinging out this deep. Sadak didn't quite get the trade, and Sentinels, they get a win off the back of that. Aspas is going to be opping over towards A again. This is a big fight in A main, and Sentinels have been winning it. 
Tag to push off the angle. Oh, Paranoia the repeat, there. yeah. Wants to try and fight this. Second though. Close has the dash to disengage out, even though there was a fragment at his feet. But he's just backing away, yeah. Three players caught in that knife. Big knowledge that they still are hanging around that area, but the fact that the paranoia was used to re-clear means you still know Sadak has those two flashes. He could try and swing back My in. Is ready. But the Sentinels players will be feeling pressured here. One of the things I'm noticing about this Sentinel squad, this iteration of the roster, is how slow they've been playing a lot of their attack side rounds. And they mix in a lot of those fast bursts. It feels like a punch in the face sometimes, but they're not afraid to really cut down the time. We saw it getting incredibly close on the first yeah. map. Yeah, going for a lot of late hits with only 30 seconds left, sometimes even less. The zero point, did that catch Marv? Shadows traveling. Do they have any interest in making this anything other than a B hit? Didn't break the alarm bot, but that's so great far. info. I mean, they yeah. suppress is less. They can get into B. Yeah, his info, or at least his util, is going to be down there. Not able to activate those nano swarms. And look at Marv just doing what he does best. Finding those cheeky little timings of Maculate. Wait, are they worried that no this could be an A hit? No. Push on the way through, they pushing, might... pulling. They've got the idea now. But Marv is in... He's deep in enemy territory. Yeah, yeah, right in the middle of nowhere here. A bit of spam coming into the back of the site. With that Odin, it's all about these kills that Marv's able to find right now. It's all over the place. Alarmbot spot in, should be aware of it. Let's was watching, but no way. Two kills. And across that placement. Asfas found the angle. Do they still want to try and go for this one? They need some sort of kill. If Zed can low enough, the spam could potentially find him, especially when he's close onto the corner, but it's counter spam up. Play can't break the dart. Eventually dealt with time running so damn low here. Neutralized. And at this point, he's just trying to play the exits, Players trying to standing. make it dangerous, trying to make it expensive. The round's going to be one for Sen, nevertheless. Not getting away with it. And it is a very expensive one there for Sentinels. They get another round on the board, and when you're playing attack side ascent, you will get, you will take anything you're given. But it is going to be a rough buy. Zekin thankfully has a blade storm that they can work with. Marv, though, he's just off doing his own thing. He isn't really he? is. He's just an absolute independent contractor. <laughs> he's coming here. <laughs> he's coming here. He's doing whatever he does. 1099 business. Yep. And uh, listen, the invoice will be in at the end of the month. But uh, so far, so good. He's just been making waves in this series. Get out of yeah, my way. Playing Catwalk gets alert pick, paranoia all the way. Just running around playing his own little game. And actually, the buy is much better than I thought. It's full rifles from everybody on Sentinels, apart from Zekin, who has a blade stop. A three-player stack to push Aspas into position again, and Loud have been going for that a lot. Normally over towards A. Oh, this corner. Sadak had the nade. His corner's good, but now he can't use his fragment. He's playing close because he anticipates the flash that's going to be coming, popped over oh. the side. This corner. Smoke at his feet. He was playing anti, but Zekin clears it. Dashes to the side. Death gets dropped down. Oh, that's that spam picks up. Bit of a gun, maybe even potentially an upgrade here in the form of that judge, and everything comes down to that. Or the Look timing. in mid. Yeah. The entire map feels like timing's being taken because no one's aware of this one. Aspas around the side, second, swinging through all the way round, and he's being covered. This is bonkers. Spike in the hands of Sassy. He's going to get that plant down. Aspas got rid of his operator, picked up a phantom instead. Faking up towards one heaven here. Wow, that's quick. Incredible shot. <laughs> Spam onto the corner because he knows the second has to try and clear this when he anticipates a player close. Dissipates, dashes forwards. No time wasted. One shot doesn't do it. Can't get the kill with it. And that's pass is just demonic, man. The way he's been moving around this map. They pushed him onto the B line early. And you think in those kind of situations, oh, Aspas is going to be out of the round a lot. He's got to retake with his operator. But he's so fast, as soon as there's any catwalk kind of pressure, to push out of B main and get a backstab. I mean, the angle he gets here is ludicrous. It's there's no way the Pancada's expecting that. Yeah, unreal confidence. Yeah, and also great communication from the rest of his team yeah. to tell Aspas, yeah, they are hard committing to this cat push. Go and flank. Not just that, though, but... They drop the lockdown and instantly push heaven and catch Sassy, who's trying to make quite a nice reactive fly. He expects them to do, be defending the lockdown. They just use it as a piece of bait. The awareness is off the charts right now for Loud. And these rounds is you know quite similar in terms of how they approach it. Just a little bit of pressure out towards B main. This fight here that needs to be taken, guess what? My sniper's a little bit better than yours, Zekin. 
Had to aim for the head. And the recon dart to give Aspas the ability to potentially set up on another deep angle. Everything about Loud in the early round is getting Aspas into these positions, and then Loud can kind of sit back and do their own stuff. You know, the rest of the players find their own value. Only 50 health there. He does have to be worried about those shocks. But there's still an alarm bot in mid, right? It's, I mean, even once you clear him out, they've still got good info there. Well, i broken. Smell some good utility here from Sadak. Looks like he wants to reclaim that space as well. Look at him creeping forwards. Up close and personal with the spike rifle. Not scared mid. of giving anything away with the spike drop down now. Gives him a great understanding of how this is going to be taken. Double ever, since, ever since Loud have... One enemy <laughs> remaining. Okay. Ever since Loud have swapped back to this composition, it just looks incredible from them. Yeah. The way in which they're moving around the map, this the way that nice, Aspas gets nice set up... To die in. A lot of a lot of teams are playing this exact same comp, right? The meta is not too crazy on Ascent right now. So it comes down to how well are you doing the basic? If you can get five or six, that's even better. Group so up. still plenty of time. Plenty of time, yeah. A lot of rounds left to play out in this first half. Loud with a significant group up here towards the A side of the map. Yeah, massive four-player stack on A. But immediately, they get Aspas posted in wine, and now they're leaving. It's the same kind of idea from Loud. If you can spot where the stack is, I think you'll get an idea for where the op is, too. The problem is, you can't really get that info in the first 20 seconds unless you're playing very aggressively somewhere. And you might just run into the stack and die. Easy he does it. Yeah, prodding down mid, but there's no alarm bot here this time. It's a kill setup on Catwalk. The call's made to re-clear, re-push through this one. What wow. the flash there? That is from Tiles. It's the same spam angle that Sugetsu was using a lock-in. Oh my goodness. Mid-compromise in the middle of all of this, though, Kawazin. So try and get out of there. Dodges the dart. Won't be tagged up. My ult is ready. Spike drop. Picking up the orb, though. Now Sen oh, trying to make their moves down. This Hunter's Fury. This is unusual. Into the back of the site. One player tagged really and dealt is. with. Into the corner. Nade slightly ajar. Covers he's happy to play this angle and takes the swing right in, but the trade is instantaneous. What a gorgeous round from Sentinels. As long as they can clean this up, but Les is in a really, really dangerous his way position. In. He is so deep. Looks all the way in yet. Marved. Ready for it. This post plan. Oh my goodness. Just Reposition with a TP. He legged got him. His toe taken off. Yeah. Five health. Dash around. Was set up for the kill, yet Marv is the one who shuts it down. Four in the round. A third round claimed here. Tag side ascent steadily working their way up to something that's looking quite respectable. That, that's beautiful, though. And actually, from Sentinels, I hope we get a replay of that spam angle that came through. No, instead, it's Marv's brilliance, which yeah. also does justify the replay, to be honest. But yeah, the, so Loud had a four-player stack on A. They had a kill set up over towards Catwalk too, and their plan was just to stack B main. Once they got back into B main, they met Pancada's Odin spam and got eviscerated. Just insane, but okay. No stopper in the action. Right back into it. I was lulled into a false sense of security with that one. We've been watching the end of the replay, and Aspas immediately wakes me back up. But it's quick, down mid. Yeah, there's no time wasted. They're not breaking the alarm bot again. It wasn't there the last round. So maybe Sentinels don't think they're putting it there every time. That tag second through the wall. Wasn't even aiming at him. It was death who we saw. Weird situation, Loud just controlling so much of the map here. And Sentinels are going back into the worst spot. Yep, minute mark, double dark. Spike down A. So unfavorable to just try and contact peek into, and the spike's been dropped down as well. This is perfect for Loud. It's really a save for Sentinels, to be honest. There's no way of recovering that spike and winning the round, I don't think. The Loud are going to get up to six here. And Aspas with the early aggression paying dividends, finding that first one. It's, it's a nice spot from Marv as well. A lot of the Omens have been playing in that kind of position because it's, 
what's supposed to be a bit of an unusual angle that you don't check as easily. Yeah. But it's become so meta that the off angle now becomes the one that you check. So down to the say that Sentinel's going to be thinking how they want to be approaching the rest of this half. Ten Not too many left. rounds left to play with. See, so I'm just saving all those guns forwards. I don't want to keep hitting the same point home, but if they are going to be playing slow like this, they need to be making sure to clear out that util in mid. Just reduces the amount of options. And let's Loud know exactly where the players are going to be ending towards, most of the time at least. One of the rifles down there, but it's not going to make a difference for the Sentinels by. They have a lockdown to work with, but they've had that for quite a while and they've not really cooked anything up with it. Meanwhile, Loud, tons of ults. Good retake ult with the null command, or good to just stop an ult from, uh, stop a hit from coming through anyway. And Cowan Seen could play plant denial from many different spots with his Hunter's Fury. There's always somebody with Aspas at the beginning of these rounds, and that is such a difference to the way that other teams play it a lot of the time. It really is. So knife down to tiles, doesn't spot anyone there, so Aspas is aiming his sights down onto top mid, but it was a smoke in his face. Flash! This is information from Sadak. He's heard a lot of noise in A main and he's calling for the operator to rotate. Yep. Aspas does not want to be playing retake with this. You should run. So wants to hold the angle now. Still has the dash. There's a gap here as well. He can play in this. Ult into the back of the spawn mark. Try to get cheeky with it and the Hunter's Fury is going to deal with that lockdown so damn easily. I would have been tempted not to use it for that and instead try to support Aspas as he takes the first shot. He had a little pocket there he could have played from. Dash forwards though. Play with a flash over the top. No kills just yet. Flash over the top as well. At least the smoke to try and block this one. It's even. Sadak's been dropped to his knees. Quick scope, quick shot. Still Aspas is alive in the action with the knives and two years as well, anchoring it down. Mankata with the most to do and with the triple swing facing him. Can't quite do it. I like the idea by Sentinels with Mark TP. That actually looked like they talked through that round. Mark tried to stick his TP into spawn, expecting the Hunter's Fury to be from there to kill the Lockdown. Right, He was right. hoping to stick it to either get a kill or yeah, it's, make him cancel the Hunter's Fury. But it's, it's a cool idea, but at the end of the day, when the sight hit comes through and Aspas is just right, unkillable, yeah. he just buys so much time and attention that Tui's plays off. You can't punish this guy. He's only got four deaths. I mean, I know that that doesn't seem as ridiculous when there's other people on his team with five, but he's playing Jay. He's fighting the early fights and he's getting tons of success without really being punished for it ever. Taking those risks. But they're all paying off. Now, okay, less for a moment there, had a classic in his hand, but picks back up a Vandal. It's really getting tenuous. This time, they spot where he is early. Working away down mid here, Lambot. This time broken, and drone's going to be used off the back of it. Spots three, that's really good information. Smoke in his face though, Aspas. Oh wow, the spam angle. And it's covering for him to just push so deep here. So many angles to watch for, he doesn't know which one first, but finally takes aim, takes the target down. With death falling, paranoia in his face, it's getting real messy. Sentinel's just grasping at anything, hunting for that opening. Something to offset this advantage, but it's a high-low setup into market. It's so damn difficult to break. It might just have to be another save. Unless Marv can find something here. The gun sticks out, but but a moment! Oh my goodness. Left. He can't be getting away with this. No scope in the smoke. He can't be getting away with it. The way that Aspas gets set up is next level. And Asen is just looking like his playground. Two players left standing, make it one. Pankana being double faced there. Eight on the board for Loud on the defensive side of Asen. One round left to be played in this in half. half. You're watching an absolute masterclass in terms of how to get your jet back onto aggressive lines. And also a masterclass from Aspas himself in delivering on those opportunities yeah. and making sure that he gets out without being punished. It's, it's beautiful to watch. It's one thing to really be supported and set up in that way, but it's another to have the confidence to really just take those risks and get out largely yeah. unpunished. It's unbelievable. It really confidence is the consistency the and the different amount of ways in which the loud players have protocols to get him back into aggressive spots. All right, here's a fast B hit. Oh, they are just being chunked out all the way through. Kawasin spamming it through into the grinder. My goodness. And they all topple. 
Pangata just running away, the ace. But the potential's there. At this point, all he's doing is ruining the Twitter clip. Yeah. Making it past the 60 second mark, but listen, hunting for it. Hunter's Fury as well. There it is. <laughs> oh, mean, what a way to finish the clip and get the ace. The team baiting for him as well to get the final kill. I mean, the vibes are in a good place right now for Loud. Unbelievably good first half from Loud. He's full blind here, too. Just spraying down. No way. He gets four kills blind and finishes things off. <laughs> Unreal. Well, I said it might be Sassy's playground, the, the Sova v Sova battle. Kalanzine 15 and 6 off the back of that ace. Looking very comfortable on the defense side. Absolutely. Well, let's send it over to Doug. He's standing by with Lee still right now, sailing their way to a potential Nova win. And unless Loud lose the pistol, this one looks absolutely wrapped up. Yeah. I mean, Loud have looked completely dominant here. Aspas is destroying. And their understanding of how to work this, uh, this classic meta composition on Ascent is, is beautiful. They don't need the Viper Harbor. A little bit of a jiggle now. That's going to be information gathered, and you can hear the rumbling, the footsteps, like a herd of elephants running away all the way through into the B site. A hard read from Sentinels that this was going to be an A hit. Full utility board from Pancada. They had four players, really, over towards that area as well. So now they're going to be playing retake. This post plan is so I potent planted. right now. Two players just anchoring hard into B main. Did they expect a second one with that first kill? I don't think it really gets cleared. Yes, jumping around the corner. What? Steph does consider it. Okay. And now the players are close into the smoke, trying to make the most of this one. How have they wrangled that? Down to two years, but now he falls. Second to close. A huge pistol that gets Sentinels back into the game for sure here. Uh, is jump peeking with the pistol meta now? <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> it's Def jump peeks into B main, and we also had Sassy leaping into the smoke there too to challenge at stairs. A lot of the time you will see players jumping around a corner with a pistol because the second player is supposed to trade the kill. But... I mean, they were just getting their own. Yeah, I don't think Death was going to be uh, ready to get traded what? there. Nobody was looking in this direction, no. but... I don't think so. That's a great retake, though, to start things off. With some big individual moments, Death had, I believe, one kill in the first half. And gets two just straight away in the pistol round in really crucial positions. I don't know, messing around, though. Minor investment. They look like they wanted to try and explode out into the B site. They might still do just that. They cut noise. Spotted there by the knife. Make sure they farm up an orb or two. The sentry should be ready for this one. They've got a decent amount of players stacked up. Making sure the defensive setup doesn't leave anything untold. Well, that's going to give a bit of a strange flavor to this round. Maybe yeah. the Sentinels players will start to think it's not going to be a B here. But it's four players in B main. They're moving their positioning. There could be some timing to be taken. Pancada and Sassy must not get caught out here. This is a round that Sentinels have got to convert for any chance of coming back in. And so the cut noise re hit. Paranoia across. Pancada! He's just running all the way back. He's trying to anchor from the far back position. So, the so caught out. Yep. Can't be the timing, and now it's afforded them a free plan. The kills, easy opportunities for Sadak to fall, but they can't quite land the shots here. Sen, a 4v5 against the weaker body of Loud. It's a scenario they did not want, and Aspas has been handed that upgrade prior. With a kill on Pankada, it's opened things up massively in exchange of the guns once more. Util, is there going to be anybody pushing up off of this one? That's going to be pointing out the players weak enough now. Everybody getting chewed down to single digits of HP, but nobody clears the close quarter. Second four, down to two of them. Anything could happen in this moment, but Loud looking like they could be in control. Players spamming it all the way through. Two years. Yes, indeed. And Sassy forced to back away. And Loud, that's magical. The way in which they work that round is a beautiful call by Sadak. The, it, it looks like Pankard is completely caught out there, like he's just fumbled it, but... What Lao do is they take B control very early on. There's a recon that they're trying to go fast B, like you said, Brent. But when that fails, they spread back out around the map and the recon at tiles gets broken. That makes it feel like there's pressure in mid. And then Sadak himself is playing over by Catwalk yeah. and gets heard. 
And that, again, makes it feel like, oh, they've spread back out. They're not going for a B hit immediately. So the Sentinels players, their positioning gets a bit more lax. They're not double in sight anymore. And Pakanda just gets caught out by the Recon Dark completely. They were not ready for that timing. Standing ahead. Beautiful round. This dart. That's on top of the turret. Yeah, I was a bit confused there, but... Lands on top of it. Doesn't see too much, but... Uh... Let's just back around the corner. Here we go. Dash into the A site. This is going to be three retake rounds in a row here from Sentinels. They've guessed incorrectly or been bamboozled every time. That's what spotted out there onto the flank, but and Sentinels really answer back the exact same way that Lau just did. They've already got their spike down into this post plan positions there. Marv, okay. Lovely shots. Rattled off. Only takes two. Gets himself a gun upgrade, but time is going to start to become a problem. He's got to run all the way through! <laughs> Spamming through with the Spectre into the smoke. Two kills. Claim, I don't think Aspas was expecting that one. He also got damage on Pancada. Dash reveals him, though. Reposition. Close into the corner to Warbang the shots. Nailing him to the side, but again, it is time that is the biggest enemy of the Sentinel squad. They just can't quite find any opportunity to get into the site. At this point, just playing the exits, but it's going to be that 11th round gain now for Loud. Steadily, surely, indomitable. It's how they're feeling right now on Ascent. And to be honest, this is looking so similar to Sentinel's game against Leviathan yeah. just last week. A, a game that, all right, it is a little closer, the game against Leviathan, in the terms of the fact that the first map went to OT. Whereas here we saw an 11-13. That, that's really not a big difference. Still extremely winnable for Sentinels this series in the 2-0 fashion. And yet, they're crumbling map three. The depth in the map pool just not quite there with this squad that's been cobbled together at the last second to help Tenz out as he sits on the bench. That's the making. That's the thing that really separates great teams from that championship tier. Zekken, though, off angle. Even a flash to try and get him out, but okay, Sadak. He doesn't leave as well. He wants another piece of things. Wants to take the fight right to them. What a great read on the fact that Death had repositioned. And it's crumbling. The gun's in the hands of the Sentinels players. There's not much they can do with them. No fights being won. No avenues opened up. And look at this. Pankata lurks his way forwards, but already his position is compromised. Two years. Walking through the smoke. They was trying to pincer him, actually. And because look at Les. There's no way Pancada knows Les is here. Oh, he's thinking He's about thinking it. about it. Swarm grenade out. He's holding. Can he fake the jump? The patience he's from Les. Him. He's waiting for the util, and there it is. As soon as he hears that alarm will be in place, it's the timing just placed right into the hands of Les. He's given it the perfect opportunity. Match point. Match point here for Loud. They have looked sublime on Ascent. Every facet of their game has just... 12 to 4. That was a timeout taken. The final one by Sentinels now to try and cook something up. The money is not great. Second, though, does have the Blade Storm to try and offset that. But it's got to be non stop. One round at a time, of course, got to focus on that. Still, you have to be perfect from this point on. A lot of good early round utility from Loud to push Sentinels back if they were playing aggressive positions. But now look at Pancada. He's just walked forwards. It's a risk for sure, but sometimes you've got to take these risks. And look at that! Speaking of risks, Marv wants to take the fight. Pancada's backing him up. And there's a swing there to punish. Really nicely played around Loud's utility at the beginning of the round. Now looking to see if they can get themselves into the B side. No one anchoring the back of it, so. Easy access to it. Spike's probably going to be able to get planted as well. Look at that from Kawazin. He's miles away. Yeah, miles away, but also was hunting for a kill as well when the rotation started to come through. Dash forwards, I love that. Swing from Sassy. Perfect timing with that one when Second was able to just dash away and send the ult. <laughs> don't, do, don't do that. <laughs> just looking to see if he can make this extra expensive, but breathing room gained at least by one round for Sentinels. I really feel like coming out of these timeouts, Sentinels have had some very nice ideas. The, the small plans that they've had to abuse Loud. I think they've just had some great understanding of the, the holes that they can pick. The problem is that it's not really extended into multiple rounds in a row. It's like a one-off play that they go for out of a timeout that ends up netting them around. And at this point, it's just a mountain to climb to get back into this game. 
seven opportunities for Loud to close this one out. This looks fast. This looks really fast indeed. No Command rips his way across at the back of the site. To TP in play. To he play. sticks it. Yes, yeah, Sassy waits it out. Punishes it. And speaking of punishment as well, the players at the front side of the site, they weren't able to get themselves in. There's an opportunity for Sentinels to really do some extra damage because someone needs to help out Sassy. In the back of the site, anchoring Flash. Repeat. Kills to be there. Beaming them down. down. The spray down. Half low enough, but Kawazin, the sole survivor of this loud squad. I have the spike. Spike in his hands. Got a minute on the clock. Senna eager not to give anything away. No abilities now. It's a bit of a double peak swing. First contact taken by Marv as the weakest player. It's Man. good discipline. The timing's crazy there, too. Just as Kawazin pulls his knife out. It's like Marv can see the opponents. <laughs> but I think that's gorgeously played by Sassy. What he did was he hid from Tui's ultimate. So it looks like there's nobody in back sight. And then as soon as Tui sticks the ult, Sassy springs out from behind the wall. Really nice. And gets the punish. Oh. Really well played to be able to find that. And, and Marv continues to be a menace inside those smokes. It's so easy to be overwhelmed with the amount of ultimates that Loud have. It just ended in a moment. The entire series. Slow beginning for Loud. They are knocked down. So a few rifles, a couple of weaker guns, still with the blade storm in Aspas's hands, though. So it does mitigate it again. Hurt's broken. So they want to try and go fast off of this. Pancada's got to be careful. Updraft, hunting. Popping the lockdown there means that Pancada has to be ready to fight. They can't get into the site, though. Dash to the side. Mancado! Out in the open. Two found. Time. Time. Lockdown broken. <laughs> Under Fury. It's all over the place. And he kills to be found with this Spike one. Down, Dodging, ducking, Spike weaving. Kawazin will fall. The players are weak. Still, Spike will get planted. Two years. Has to be the hero to try and close out this round, to try and close out this series. He's in that post plan position. Fakes the reposition, though. With that TP, last he's got the rifle standing. in his hands, but he is the last one standing. And now Sentinels know they can flood into the site still. The positions, no, Marv clears it. It's expensive, though, for Sentinels. They use two ultimates there, the Lockdown and the Hunter's Fury, in order to win that round. And I'm a little concerned with how Pancada's playing, too, because as soon as the site hit comes through, Act he's just sprinting Don't from stairs to back site. And he doesn't have any help there. I was worried that Aspas was just going to updraft and kill him instantly. So, uh, definitely some holes and the lack of ultimates now. If Sentinels win this one, though, we might be talking about it being doable, them getting to OT. Because the money will not be good for Loud as we head into round 21. Can Loud put an end to it right here? That's the hope for them. Don't let it get out of hand. Send focusing on just that one round at a time. Pop flash, re clear here from Sen. It's risky. A lot of positions where if somebody from Loud was playing anti flash, they could have punished that. But instead, they're pivoting all the way over towards B. And again, it comes down to these anchoring players. Smoker to the corner. Hunter's Fury. Common angles watched for. There was also something else comboed up with it. So Bankada couldn't see a thing. And Sassy has to do work. Spike down. Two beam, beam down. Dart at his feet. Doesn't tag on to Les. Les actually can just sit here, wide out in the oh, open. Fight. Drone going to be used. Puts a dampener into the round, tags him up here as well. It's dangerous. Out into the open, yet still he's making the most of it. Drops out onto the floor. Spam onto the corner, 59. Still less swings. 2v2. And this time's that 2v2. You Weak enough be still. As plus Marv wins it. Lockdown placed. Reloading in the middle of it. This is so dangerous. What does second do? How does he play it? Pushing forwards. Could be spammable. Has to respect that the lockdown. No time running so low just wow. gets out of there. The spike's still Placing not planted. Let's give it a bit of a breather. 30, 30 seconds. seconds left. Down. Plant down in the post plant. Comes down to anything. Les is so incredibly weak. Out. That surely gets communicated. Sheer timing. Uh. Turret's going to be taking contact off the stairs. Turret's destroyed. Back's going to be watched. Seconds worried about being repushed. Less on 21 health to try and close out the series. And tensions are running high to repush his cord here. Right in the second. And he finishes it. Less feeling like a risk needed to be taken. 
Yeah, at that point, he's lost information on where Zekin could be. Stairs, lane. I mean, in an ideal world there, actually, Zekin is pushing lane unless manages to wrap up and around him. But what that a star Sassy has been, no? Yeah, at I the mean, back of the side there. Both Sassy and Pancada playing hard anchor positions right from the beginning of the round. And Sassy has been mixing it up enough that it's very difficult to tell when Pancada's alone. Troll Heaven, get Aspas and Tui's deep onto the site with a Kawanzina less, hold the angles. I mean, just the, the basic fundamental stuff is normally done extremely well. And we really haven't seen that tested too much for Sentinels. A lot of pings there over towards tree on the side allowed here maybe that's for a paranoia i think so yeah. this this looking like an a split is going to test second a lot they want to try and punish anybody who's trying to hold that tree area a man is controlled both def and marv but now you can hear it jumping bobbing weaving seconds punished didn't know which angle to really watch for there it was a bit hard to get grasp on it paranoia flash to re-clear marv's in a deep position but they have given up a lot of space and this is where it really gets tricky it's always these rounds you got to watch for Anything could happen, one single mistake, and they're already in a 4v5. It's so dangerous right now. In theory, anyone from Loud could be trying to cross through to Grass. That's why Sassy has to keep that position. They don't know where they are. Flash to repeat, and a shot! Nailed! So consistent. The weapon, the right one for the job. Death feeling fluster, just can't quite manage it. It's up to again, Sassy. The heroics there, a bit of spam Revealing through the smoke, area. punishing one of the players and a dart to re-clear, but does he anticipate this? Holding that backstab angle. The task bus with the operator. One that? kill found has to re-swing into him. Will he be taking it? Ships in the night, yet Aspas claims it. Down to Pancada. To save them in the series, to save them in the map. No easy fights given. The re-swing's dead! Eventually what out loud! They win it! Not allowing the comeback from Sentinels to really get as dangerous as it could have been. Loud on a bit of a...